Ladies and gentlemen, please let's have our seats. I believe that was helpful. And I guess in the course of the day's conversation, you're going to have you're going to meet one or two people that you can continue life's journey with as business partners and as a whole lot of things, right? Um, it's very important that at a conference like this, you are here in body and in mind. And um, all of those also joining us on online are also going to be gleaning from the same things that those of us in the room are going to be gleaning from. Um, today, my name is Femi, and I'll be your host for this conference and today's conversations. Um, on behalf of Custodian Investment PLC, I welcome you once again to this conference, and I hope that this insightful and enlightening journey that we're going to take together will be beneficial to you, and you'll be able to have key takeaways that can spur your growth and personal development. Can we give ourselves a warm applause? All right, very quickly, to begin, shall we please rise as we take the national anthem of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please let's have a seat. Just, um, just for laughs and as a digression, I hope you are not one of those that say to serve Nigeria is not by force. It is to serve with heart and what? Heart and right, because that's very important. It's very important. We're starting with the national anthem, not just as a means of protocol, but just to also remind us that whatever we're doing individually and collectively impacts our nation, Nigeria. It begins with you. It begins right now. It begins here. Once again, a warm applause for ourselves. Right. Um... We have distinguished guests amidst us, um, aside our speakers, which you can see already on the, on the screens. And I'd like you to just, with a warm applause, appreciate them as I call them and I call their names. They are from the custodian group, and I want your applause to be resounding as we recognize them. First, I'm going to call the group executive director in the person of Mr. Nee Falade. Please, can you just signify to the house? Just please wave. You can just wave to them. Right. He is the group executive director of the Custodian Investment PLC Group. And it's very important that you know that when you see this gathering happening, it's not just because of a few people putting things together. It's because we have key people like the names I'm going to be calling in addition to his that make this happen. Also, we have the managing director of the Custodian Trustees Limited in person of Mr. Adeinka Jafojo. Where are you, sir? Right. 
And we have the Managing Director of Interstate Securities Limited, Mr. Adolapo Ashiro. And to crown it all up, we have the Group Managing Director of Custodian Investment PLC, in person of Mr. Wale Oshi. And so we are all seated here. We are all seated here because of these wonderful people. Can we give them a warm applause once again? Right to, um, very shortly we're going to be playing a video reel of our journey in the Custodian Mentors Conference. And why is this important? Since 2018, we set out as custodian to reach out to young people, to people in different sectors and different cadres of life, to share knowledge from the custodian group and other people who are leaders in their respective industries. And since 2018, we've been doing that all up till this particular moment that we're in in 2023. So I'd like you to just fix your eyes on the screens as our audio team, our video team share the video reel talking about our journey from 2018 till now. I was going to save up for two months and buy myself a bit car. That was how successful I was at university. And I became somebody who had to, you know, they have money for food. But what that did was that it forced me to reach inside for itself for solutions. For solutions. And you can't be poor and proud. The social network is the is the, is, is, the, is the best time in human history that the cost of knowledge crashed. At the age of 18, I already knew where I was going. I knew I was going to be CEO of an insurance company. Um, and I was committed to it. Every step that I took thereafter was deliberate and intentional. And um, this is the advice that I will give to them, that they should be committed, they should be focused, um, and they should pursue you know, uh, the goal that they have set out there. So is it possible for you to be in a situation where one day you are okay and the next day you are bankrupt as a business? Yes, it's very, very possible. But what do you do? You will hear examples over and over again that be ready. It does not matter how many times you fall. What is important is when you stand up and go again. Every one of us will have a different. Oh, by the way, I have no apologies for being a Christian. There's a way me and my own God works. Let's move away from I just want to survive too. I want to thrive and I want to grow. And there is growth in this country. There are opportunities for growth. And I'm going to begin to see those opportunities of growth for growth. One of the things you have to start doing is start looking at your current business and saying, what else? What else? I realize that quite a number of young people do not have people that they look up to. They don't have, they have ideas, but when you talk to them, you begin to discover that they say to you that I need a mentor. I want to be able to get somebody that can guide me or provide a way for me. And I think this is when we started thinking that, okay, contributing to the society um, of which um, I must say needs the help of each and every one of us. You need to be your authentic self. You need to be who you are or who you know yourself to be. You are different from everybody else. There's no one like you, and there's no one that can do what you do like you do. That it has always been in you. The things that you were created to do, the purpose for which God created you, it has always been in you. It's always there. You might not know what it is yet. 
but it's there it's in you don't worry about fitting in when you were created to stand out and i hope we're still taking notes don't worry about it if you don't quite fit in with everybody or if the way that you think or the things that you want to do you were created to stand out so don't worry about fitting in if you're created to stand out your mentor would not come looking for you now you go go find them you are the one who's going to chase Mike Mudok says that pursuit is the proof of desire. The law of elevation states that as long as I continue to inject myself with certain kinds of content again and again and again over a period of time, my current environment will have no choice than to eject me and elevate me. If it's what you really want, you need to be patient. You need to be patient. You need to be patient. Because God that holds all of the time, all of your time and my time, He knows when the right time is for you. But just be patient and be diligent in preparing yourself for what you want to do or who you want to become. The world may be full of good and evil but your world may be filled with good if you seek the good in the world because what you seek is what you find so as mentees i want to encourage you this morning custodian you know based on my experience i didn't have the privilege to have a mentor we just trudged along trial and error but with determination, was able to get to, we've been able to get to where we've gotten to. And we felt that that gap, you know, across Nigeria today, because we have such brilliant young people across this country. Oleoshi is the founder and group managing director of Custodian Investment PLC. He is an industry leader with over 35 years experience. He has at various times been a member of the Presidential Committee on Pension Reforms, Chairman of the Nigerian Insurance Association, Council Member of the West African Insurance Companies Association, Ghana, External Lecturer, West African Insurance Institute, Banjul, The Gambia. He sits on several boards, including the International Insurance Society in New York, as well as council member of the Nigerian Insurance Association and the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council. He has received numerous awards, including nomination as African CEO of the Year by African Reinsurance Corporation, a three-time awardee of the Top 25 CEOs Award by the influential Business Day newspaper and the 2019 Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria Leadership Award for General Management. A graduate of actuarial science and a chartered insurer by profession, Wale Oshi holds the Doctor of Finance Honoris Causa and is a fellow of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, the Risk Managers Society of Nigeria and the Association of Investment Advisors and portfolio managers, as well as a fellow of the West African Insurance Institute, Banjul, the Gambia. He is a past president of the Lagos Business School Alumni Association, as well as an alumnus of the Harvard Business School. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly give a warm welcome to the Group Managing Director of Custodian Investment, PLC, Wale Oshi.
need direction. And each time I talk to young people, I also find out that your time is actually much more confusing than our time. You're burdened with social media presence. I was talking to the mentees on my table, and I said I'm not on social media. I said, but there's nothing wrong with being on social media. It's just a personal choice. But what happens in that space is that you can easily or accidentally adopt a bad mentor because there are so many supposed influences in that space. And we feel that it's important that we guide as much as possible the young people of this country, which are the managers of tomorrow, the leaders of tomorrow, to be mentored by entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, successful professionals, and people that have done great things, you know, and at some point in time were like you. The only difference is that they had something burning inside them, and they were able to pursue it. So we're hoping that by the time we're done today, and as you've seen some clips, a young lady on my table was filming and she said to me, I hope I'm going to get all this today. I said, well, you, you be patient. <laughs> I'm sure with the caliber of people we have here, you certainly, you know, won't walk away empty. You're all going to walk away filled. And you'll be beaming and, you know, driving towards ensuring that you all have, you're all successful. So without much ado, I'd also like to thank our partners, our partners since 2018, all the consulting. I mean, can you please give them a round of applause? As you know, we, we couldn't have done this on our own. You know, Alda have all the way held our hands. You know, I got a call from Lake Alda just as I was sitting over there, you know, apologizing to me that he will be late, that he's engaged in some family uh, function. But Alda, thank you very much for your partnership. And I'd also like to thank all our past speakers, you know, they've been great. They've done very well. Some of them have kept up with their mentees, even as we speak. You know, kudos to all of you. I want to thank the past participants. We've had some mentees that are fully in touch with us, you know, doing great things in the marketplace and in their areas of chosen profession. I think that's the whole idea. Uh, I want to see a future where we have a strong alumni, you know, where you guys are sharing ideas and building up experiences across board. I think that's all part of what we're trying to drive at. But I must say, before I leave here, let me thank in advance the people that will be filling us this morning. Uh, <laughs> They've, 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 I'm sure they are well prepared. You know, T.Y. Belo is here. Shei is here. Chico is here. When I saw Chico, I said to him, I said, nice to meet you in person. But his voice has been doing wonders for decades. That's, that's the kind of impact we're talking about. I've never met him in person. You know, we all know who Shei is. We all know who T.Y. is. Everybody has chosen their path in life, and they've decided to dig deep in that space. So as we start today, I want you all to relax. If you need to take photographs or do some mini recordings, or write notes, you know, just take those things that affect you. It could just be one phrase that will spin your life around. That's sufficient. Just note it. Good morning, all. Enjoy your day. Thank you. A warm applause once again for Mr. Oshin, the GMD Custodian Investment PLC. Um, I'm not going to be going there because I'm not part of those that are going to serve you food this morning, like Mr. Oshin said. So to take your first meal this morning, we're going to be playing right now the profile of Mrs. Shei Banibi.
Shay Bani Bay is a multifaceted lady who is passionate about Africans, about Africans being financially empowered alongside, alongside living their dreams. She's a, she's a trained lawyer with an MBA from the Imperial College London. She obtained her law degree from the University of Lagos and was thereafter called to the Nigerian Bar. She's a certified member of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators UK and the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators UK. She started her legal career working for many years in the Tax and Corporate Advisory Unit of Price Waterhouse Coopers, Nigeria, and thereafter became company secretary slash legal advisor for upstream oil and gas company SunTrust Oil. She currently sits on the board of several leading organizations. She, she has, has a strong entrepreneurial spirit and as a, and as a result has started several, several successful businesses in Nigeria. In Nigeria. She, is she is the founder of the popular jewelry brand Glam to Glam, which retails across several upscale malls in Nigeria. She, she is the creator and host of Nigeria's most syndicated talk show, Binging with Game Changers, which airs on TV stations nationwide. She is a founding partner with Nebo and Tac Legal Practitioners and is also the founder of Deterge Nigeria, a facility management firm that specializes in the disinfecting and maintenance of water dispensers. She is fondly called the Queen of Success Talk. She is indeed passionate about educating and inspiring Nigerians to be the best in their respective fields of work. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to Shei Welcome and a warm applause, please, as she goes to the stage. Let the applause ring. Thank you. Is it working? Can you hear me? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Mr. Wale Oshin, for the opportunity to, you know, just interact and meet all of these great people in the room. I'm grateful to Custodian PLC and also Alda Consulting. Thank you for this privilege. Can we appreciate them? They're the reason. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm excited, like I said, I'm excited to be here. I have a lot to say, but I would make sure I say everything in the allotted time. I have my lovely daughters here with me as well. I'm excited. Just wave, wave, say hi. <laughs> yes, they follow mommy everywhere because they want to be like mommy. All right. <laughs> okay, so disclaimer before I start. I'm from a very middle class home, extremely middle class. I think they even call it lower middle class. Because what happens when you've grown over the years, people see you, see my hair now, and they just think, oh, she's from money. I'm not from money, you know. And I think it's important that I give perspective so that when I'm talking today, you know, many of you can see yourselves in whatever I'm saying. I had no driver taking me anywhere. Sometimes when I tell people, they can't even imagine it. And I'm like, ah. Till I started working, going to anywhere I was going to, whether it was church or anywhere it was, um, you can't, I can't, oh, 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 wait, 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 you know, that. so I'm like, I'm like everyone, you know, <laughs> you know, so very normal, very everything, all I had was dreams, somebody say dreams, all right, so I'm going to just share seven things that I wish my mentor told me. And number one, I would say, embrace your logo. Yes, embrace your logo. What's your logo? Your logo is you. Nobody, nobody is you. Nobody can ever be you. Nobody can be like you. First of all, you look different. You have unique set of eyes, thumbprints. But more importantly, I tell people, nobody can even see life the way you see life. Why? They were not born into the same family you were born into. They were not born in the same state. They didn't attend the same school. So you are different. You on your own, you are, you, you are, you are magic. No other person has the kind of magic that you carry. 
It's very, very important that I set this as a foundation. And I would say that knowing this, learn to embrace you. Both the good, well, what you term the good, bad, and ugly. Own it. Own it. I know, you know, some of you will sit here and think, ah, I won't lie, I don't like the, the background, the home I, I was born into. Ah, let's not even go there. Let's just be hiding that one. Let's not put that one on social media. You'll be amazed that that background that you're from is, that, that's your unique selling point. You just don't know yet. You might get into a situation and is that Ijile, Akure, Yoruba, that you know how to speak, that will, that will, that will, that will be your breakthrough. So whatever it is, whether you are from the posh background, grassroots, whatever it is, take your story, own it, but all I ask you to do is polish it. Don't just, every, don't go everywhere and say, this is how I am, oh, this is how I am, oh. hey, hey, this is how I talk, oh. Mm-mm. Whatever it is that you have, take it, polish. You know what it is when people, men especially, they are very particular about polishing their shoes. Because when a shoe is full of dust and it's not nice, when you put a polished one beside it, they look like different shoes. God gave you a mouth. Okay, so work on speaking well. You have a brain. You can go to school and have just, all you need to do is just polish yourself. I tell people, embrace you. You may have had a rough childhood. I promise you that is going to be your unique selling point. Embrace it. One of the reasons I married my husband was because I saw someone that embraced his roots and where he was from. As at this time, we weren't even dating. He called and he said, oh, how are you? I said, "Ah, I'm ill. So I'm at home. He said, hey, you're ill. Okay, I'm coming to check you. For information, I went to the University of Lagos, you know. So, and when you're in lag, even if you're not posh, they'll be deceiving you and be telling you you're posh. Uh So, when he says, ah, I'm coming to visit you, because I said, girl, home girl was expecting blue bunny ice cream, chocolate, everything, you know, since the man is trying to impress you. And then, I just saw the person walk into my house with a bunch of plantain, bag of orange. Ah, and then, why? Did you go to a farm? What's wrong? He said, ah, but you say you are sick. My husband born and bred in Ilorin. He's not a Lagos person. Fantastic, brilliant engineer, but he wasn't raised in Lagos. So. He said, but you say you are sick. You need nutrients. I was like, eh. I thought it's ice cream. You No, 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 Shay. This is what your body needs now. Where you are now well, we can get you ice cream. And right there, then I said, this is a man that can tell me what I need, not what I want. The, he knows, he, he, he has, he, you know, I just saw someone that was not trying to feel like the Lagos crowd. Yeah, I'm going to, going to drive to her house and give her burgers and ice cream. Well, I was tired of seeing all that. So a lot of you that just try to feel among, oh, this is what they are doing. Stop it. Only do you. Do you. If you are, just accept you and do you. But I, always remember, like I said, polish it. And there's, society always wants to fit up, put us in a box. I keep saying, do you. I finished from school, 2-1, law. Of course, I got into a big four. For those of us that know what big four is, you know, top four global, you know, advisory firms, PricewaterhouseCoopers. But I always, look, I always had that thing for fashion, Right? A lot of times, when I'm waiting, maybe for after work, and I'm waiting to go home, other people are studying, what do you call it now? You know, texts from researchers. I would have just been waiting to work closes. I'll have my magazines, Cosmopolitan, fashion magazines, everything in my bag. And you see me studying global trends. What, 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 what is on the runway? What, what kind of, what, what, fashion, what is fashioning right now? It was, it was important to me. I, ne- I never allowed the fact that because I, I was brilliant, I understood the law, I, I was doing my work well, I didn't kill my desire for fashion or interest in fashion. 
And since I worked in an organization that says, look, as long as you're not um, doing anything in competition with what we do here, feel free to express yourself in other ways. You can do whatever else you want to do. So I was always selling jewelry, anything fashion. People knew, hi, Shay, even we, hi, Shay, I want to buy this, this. Don't worry, just meet me up here, you know, and I'll sell to you. So even while I had my nine to five, I knew, look, I wasn't going to run away from that thing. Even from year two in University of Lagos, I, all, I wasn't, I, like I told you, I wasn't traveling abroad. But all those aunties that used to travel, I'll collect clothes. I, when I get to Mori Miho, everybody, everybody, I've got in a night, I'll sell everything out. Because it wasn't just about selling. I'll tell you, man, just go. Don't take it off. Oh. I, I, I just had that gift. I could, I could, I could sell ice to es, the, you know, Eskimos. Wear this one. No, 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 no. Don't touch that color. This is what's going to go with your tone. Wear it. Yes, that's it. It's yours. <laughs> there was even a time to well, some new makeup brand got into Nigeria. They were asking for distributors. Because remember, I was a hustler. I was still a hustler. You know, I signed up because, I mean, their margins were good. Then, so they gave us some palettes. I, I was not a makeup artist. But they said, don't worry. Just put it on people's faces. Once it's their tone, sell. Ah, all my friends were in trouble. Come for your makeup testing. Come for your makeup testing. I think it was slick. So I know most of you here might not know slick. But then they were a big deal back then. I'll put it on you. Yes, yeah, so you need this pencil. You need this. You need that. I was one of the highest distributors they had. Because I'll just tell you what you need. And you'll buy it. Today, that love for fashion is Blant Glam, my jewelry brand. How many of us have seen Blant Glam in any mall? Ikeja City Mall, Jabi Lake Mall, Abuja, Lennox Mall. Lake. We have no less than 20 people in We employ nothing less than 20 people. We are in, you know, upscale malls nationwide. I, honestly, I never knew all this, my little, little selling would lead to the kind of numbers we are doing right now. But I didn't drop my law. I just, I just made sure, I just, I just knew that if I was so passionate about this thing, I wouldn't let it die. There was something about it. And in my, in my own little way, I kept giving it life. I kept giving it life. Remember, do you, be you. Be you. Don't be anybody else. You know, sometimes, I always tell people, my husband and I were so different. You, you can tell I love him very much. I keep talking about him. <laughs> you know, we're so different. And Recently, I, f I didn't confirm that indeed we are very different. So sometimes we'll be at home chilling. I'm on my phone, I'll, I'll, and he'll say, he'll, I'll see him laughing. You know that thing when someone's laughing, you be like, what's it, what's it, what's it, what's this on social media? He'll now show me. I'll now see one black looking Yoruba guy talking. And he'll crack a joke. I'm like, will laugh. I'm like, what's it? He'll say, oh, you don't know Goro so he kids. I'm like, what's that? Then I was talking to someone. I was not telling someone, gosh, have you seen this lie wasabi guy? He is so funny. And then the friend of mine was like, I know, I don't think he's funny. Have you seen Goro Soe Kitty? That is funny. I'm like, oh my. He said, look, Shay, the world right now, Nigeria is divided. You either like was, um, lie because you are probably overly cerebral. You like the corporate jokes. But we that we understand your bar. It's gross. I'm like, I said, I've never laughed at any of those things. I'm just showing you that. Just do you. And I, I, I'm not going to be ashamed to say it anyway. I am on the Lai Wasabi side. Who is the Lai Wasabi fan here? Who is Goros or Ekiti? <laughs> Some of you don't even know who I'm talking about. It's a big deal. To the Yoruba speaking guys. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, I'm running now. My second point is be excited to meet people. Be very, very excited about meeting people. Value the people you meet along the way. Especially now that you are younger, you know, no heirs. Nobody's trying to say, oh, what car is he or she driving? You're just living your life free and happy. I tell you, the people you are meeting now, that's your network. I've never really been a fan of when people say, oh, Go to this place, network, network, network. Yes, you meet people, but let me tell you, your real people are the people you meet in class, in school, you know, in church, wherever. You know, 
Just engaging in a sporting activity. It, that, those are, that's your network. You know why? You guys did not meet each other having intentions. No strategic, ah, I'm going to use. You know, nowadays, there's a level you get to, I tell you. When you where people meet you or you meet them, they feel this person wants to use me to, to climb up to this. There's just pressure. But when you are young, oh my gosh, meet people, low. Oh. And you guys are so fortunate living in this age. Why? You meet each other and you can stay in touch through social media. So on LinkedIn, Instagram, you're liking each other's posts. For some of you, that's the only way you're in touch. But you're in touch. And you're blessed to have that. When the person lands a new job or a new gig, I'm proud to announce they'll go on LinkedIn. I was honored. But guess what? You know who is a, 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 a dondada in the legal space. You know who is producing music. And all of you know what you do. You know, everybody is evolving and knowing, okay, this one is taking over in that space. This one is doing big things in that place. And then after a while, you guys will be amazed how you just come together, different opportunities, and collaborate. So meet, about, please take note. It's not only about meeting people to be mindful of what you get from them. You also have to have value. You also have to, be, you, you, you also have to, aggressively work on yourself, on your profile, on your knowledge, on your skills, so that day to day will say, ah, ah, I know Chi, or I know Abuewa, did I miss it? Abi, Emmanuel. I know Emmanuel, let me hit him up. He will help me with this. If you are the person that is always going to say, help me, help me, help me, they will start missing your calls though. Mm -hmm. They will. For you to have value. Day to day have value. And you guys, you know, there'll be co uh, optim optimal collaboration. So, when, when you see people joining clubs, char charity, I mean, for me, you know, uh, in school, it was fellowship. I mean, it was, that was, that was my own social ground. And of course, for me, I mean, back then, I looked at it. Which one would give me peace? Is it the club parties or fellowship? I said, Fellowship, I'll, 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 I'll meet people, but I'll have peace. So I, I, chose, I chose that end. But what's most important, I was meeting people. I was forming my tribe. So don't be that person that they'll say, oh, there's an opportunity to play this sport. Of course, I'm not saying don't you do things outside your comfort zone. But if you know that you have interest in this thing, you know, providing service here, helping the needy here, do it. Apart from the thing you're going to give or benefit, you're going to meet people. You're building your contact list. It's so critical. Because you know what? Competence is, is very important when you're just entering the marketplace. Oh, what's on your CV? Like, what, what did you study? Let me tell you, after a while, competence is not enough to open doors. It's who you know. I mean, it's sad sometimes. When he's working against you, it's sad. And it's only people that they know that they give jobs in that place. Only people that they know that they give contracts. But trust me, when he's working for you, this is how you'll be working. Um, so we're friends in, in university. So I just, I just placed a call to him. <laughs> so don't, don't be that person that's sitting down beefing the people that have connections. You, you just, this is the stage. You're fortunate. Build your friends. Don't be antisocial. And I'm not saying go party if you're not a party head. But they, for every kind of personality, there are social gatherings that fit your, your, your person. Enjoy it. Take advantage of it. People are your greatest assets. I think that's what I've just tried to establish. Most times, they're your greatest asset. And I know you've heard this before, but I promise you, they are. You might be looking for, I remember the last job I ever applied for. It was just someone on my, then it was Blackberry, BB. She just sent a broadcast because they weren't interested in putting up ads on newspapers. Oh, you know, this kind of firm is looking for this kind of person. And that was it. So enjoy meeting people, exchanging contacts. It's, it's totally good. So I run now. My third, um, third point is, Desire the best for your people and all people. Desire the best for your people and all people. Because everything in life submits to the laws of so, to the law of sowing and reaping. 
Whatever you plant is what you will harvest. Hence, one of my key life mantras is whatever I make happen for people, God will always make happen for me. If you are a helpful person, when you need help, help will come. I did not say that if you are helpful, those people you've helped will help you all. Because some of us, that's what makes us bitter. We become bitter. We say, I helped that person when he needed it. When I now needed, they didn't help. Stop it. It's wrong. That's a wrong way to live life. When you help people, help them just knowing that you are, you are, you are sowing your seed. It will come, your harvest is going to come from anywhere. Once in a while, it comes from that person, but most times, never. It never comes from the person you are giving to. So just be a giver. Don't be that person that you, when your friends are in need, they are calling, hey, hi, can I, you know, in your, whatever you are able to do for people, do. Your friend calls you, oh, I have a project, can you help me review? Help them review if you can. Care about the success of your friends, of your loved ones. I'm starting from there, then I'm going to now say, care about the general good. What are the things that you walk around society, you are pained about this situation? Like Mr. Wale Oshin said, oh, he just, he looks at young people, he thought, ah, did all these people on social media misleading them? Now every time you open social media, is there, some people are just kissing, touching, you know, they say it's a reality show, I didn't mention any name. After a while, you now tell yourself it's normal to touch girls anyhow. To, you know? After, because you become what you see constantly. What did Mr. Wale Oshin do? Did he just turn off his phone and say, well, let let's, let's, the world will take care of itself? No. He came up with a, a solution that is helping. Let's give them some right role models to look at. So what is that problem that you are seeing that is affecting the populace? Well, you, you, can, you can add your own little value. Don't be that person that is always quick to just overlook. Oh, I remember one day I was, I, I was still in full-time employment then. So one of my colleagues came and said, Ah, they said so, 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 is on fire. Um, and so I'm rushing to go and pick up my kids. Somewhere in Antonio, so. My, I'm rushing to pick up my kids just to get them out. And before I even thought, I just said, why don't we call, why don't we do, take necessary steps to make sure that all the kids, they are evacuated? And she just looked at me. I beg, I beg, I'm going to go and get my own kids. But, you know, I went back and I thought, she, are you weird? Be- she's thinking of her kids, but I'm thinking, why all the kids should be helped? But, you know, I thought further and I said, no, she, yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with you, Shay. That's the way to think. If all of us are too conscious of only me, my brother, my sister... The Nigeria won't get better. The world won't become a better place. And I know you, you cannot solve every problem, but the problems that you are passionate about is because God can, has put a, a, something in you to help solve that problem. How many of us know that we are like machines to the creator? He wired us with different kind of, you know, giftings. Well, the problem I can solve, you can solve it. The problem you can solve, I don't have the capacity to solve it. So don't joke with those things that constantly irritate you. Anger. Think, what solution can I give to it in my own little way? That attitude of saying, eh, I can't save the world. No. All we need is 10 or 100 of people like you. So do your own. Do your own part. Because I know that since 2018, for instance, that custodian has been having this conference. I know from the people that have come, we'll have presidents. We'll have governors. We'll have Dangotes. We'll have Zuckerbergs. So, yes, you might think it's just this room or people watching on the internet, but this is changing the world. Because most times you need just one person to change the world. So, sow the right seeds so you can reap the right harvest. Number four, I'd say marry with your head and heart. I know you might think we are talking success. Why is she bringing marriage into it? Marriage is important too. And it's only very few people like me that actually say, I don't plan to get married. Most people want to get married, especially the ladies. Sorry, I did. did I just say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> we 
we are so, we're, as some of us, we know how our wedding dress will look like. We, know, we are ready. No boyfriend yet, but we are ready. <laughs> but I have to talk about it because whoever you marry will either destroy you or elevate you. I promise you. And I don't know where men got this attitude that it doesn't really affect them. That they can marry anybody. I hear that a lot. No, it's women that should be concerned. Me? Well, I mean, any woman I marry, it's what I tell her to do, she'll do. <laughs> Go and ask the men that women are finished. Then they'll tell you to marry right. Women are powerful. Never underestimate a woman. So I will tell everybody today, marry with your head and heart. And I propose you put head first. Because I promise you, I, always, I tell women, especially, look, anybody that buys us shawarma for like one month, you start liking the person. Leave that like thing. Mm. You can like anybody. And I'll be saying, ah, is he more? Is he my love? <laughs> if you are liking the person, and some things are not adding up. Move. You're welcome, darling. <laughs> I tell you, because marriage is deep. Marriage is, I, tell, I say marriage is like taking your life and placing it in someone's hand that take. So then I ask you, you should look at that person and say, what has this person done with their life? It tells you exactly what they will do with your own life. I remember I got to a point in my life and I legit told myself, Shame, it's okay if you don't get married. Why? And what was my why? I'm honestly, I wish there was an English way I could put this, but I don't have the right words. But this was, this was my mantra. I do not want anyone to put sand in my gary. I wish there was a posher way to say it, but that is exactly how it was for me. I saw myself as gary, and I saw the wrong man as sand. And when you put sand inside Gary, you can't drink it. I, was, I, I wanted to just remain Gary. Please. I mean, I'd worked too hard. As in slaving in school, sleepless nights, getting like, oh, we must have a 2-1 or first class, 2-1. You do all that. Then after school, I'm working and I'm still building my little, little fashion business, doing this. Then one man... We'll now come from somewhere and be saying, it doesn't feel like working today. Ha! <sighs> or we'll now, a woman will now come and say, eh, you are working too hard. Eh? Just sit at home. Hmm? Of course, I needed to be with someone that would say, ha, I just love the, I love your drive. You know, so take note of those things. Uh, you know, when, when someone is already complaining about you, that thing that makes you you. That thing that makes you happy. That makes you, you know, stand out. Just run away because they don't like you. So I think, I mean, I think that's enough for marriage, but you get it. I know you get it. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost done. Number five, make excellence a habit. Make excellence a habit. Treat every task as though you were going to be paid one billion naira for it. That is, as that is, that is your modus, that has to be your modus operandi. It has to be. Everything must be done as if there is a billion naira check waiting for you at the end of it. You know what, what happens? You never know the thing that you are doing that will lead you to your next big thing. So when you have an attitude of excellence towards everything, even if they say you're responsible for sweeping. I'll tell you a little story. When I, when I, when I, when I was serving, I served in PricewaterhouseCoopers where I eventually worked. And, you know, the coppers, the coppers got, most coppers got there and they'd be like, okay, what did you study? Accounting. Go to the accounting unit. I'm sorry, go into audits. What did you study? Okay, you go into business development. You know, my peers were being sent to, into the field to work. Then I got there. And then some amazing person says, oh, you are beautiful. You're going to see at my reception. 
this is the face I want people to see when they walk in. I'm like, excuse me, I'm a lawyer. He said, okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Just spend three months. I mean, don't worry. You're not a receptionist. It's called clients. Oh, what do you call it that time? To, to psych me or... They elevated it. Client services, something, something. I was a receptionist. And they made me sit there, you know, two months, three months. Well, if I just... I, honestly, I woke up every day angry. With all my knowledge, someone looked at me from head to toe. You're beautiful. Sit there. But you know what? I made sure I did it angrily, though. But I did it with all my heart. You know? So when people walked in, hello, fake smile. Hello, how may I help you? This, that, that. Okay, I'll call him. Okay, you have this parcel. So what happened? Because of that, I had to meet a lot of people. Then what then happened? A lot, a lot of times, the partners, I, I don't, okay, you might not know what partners is, but like the MDs, the Mr. Wale or Shins there. You understand my point now? The bosses. When they needed anything, they will now come to me. She, yeah, hey, hey. So you help me, hey, you help me. When this person comes, don't tell them this, give them that, you know? So I didn't realize I had a close relationship with people that, you know, eventually I saw that people would be shaking. And when those ones get to be like, ah, she, ye, mm, ah, ah. Then after a while, even after living there, one of them called me, oh, she, ye, I love your talk show. This is fantastic. This is what Nigeria needs. I love the kind of people you are profiling and talking to. I need to get you into all the um, banks. And it, this, he took it upon himself. Started calling people. She, this is the MD of so, so, so. She's come to meet you. I need you. And, and how did I meet this person? While well, I was a receptionist. That's how I became friends. But I did it excellently well. So if you are giving a floor to sweep, this, at this generation, gen, gen, uh -huh, they'll say, sorry, this is beneath me. I can't do this. I, I'm not trained for this. You people like that thing. It's, 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 it's discriminatory. It's sexist. Work. Just work. And do it well. Excellently well. You never know where to take you. You never know the sort of relationships it will give to you. I run. I wish I had someone give me an idea of how many minutes I had left. But it's okay. Um, so... Even when you have to attend a meeting, whatever it is you need to do, do it excellently. When you're at a meeting, be punctual, prepared, and present. Punctual, be prepared, and be present. When I say present, mentally. Some of us, social media. You are somewhere where you should be listening. You are on social media. Ha. Huh. I won't say more than that. Be present. When you are studying, be present. Social media is good, but when it's not used appropriately, it will mess you up. It's a tool. It's not your life. So quickly, I go to number six. Choose your team quickly. And when I say team, I mean, when I started off, you know, my career journey, I told myself, there's two, there's two teams in life. I mean, I sat down and in my own little corner, I observed Nigeria. I observed the people I was meeting. And I told myself, Sheyi, there's two kinds of people. There is the team, there is the team, team pity party. I mean, these are my own words. You might, you won't find them in any textbook. But there is the team pity party. And there is the team, we set goals and we don't give up till we crush them. That's honestly, and I promise you, Nigeria is that way. There is the pity party. Who are the pity party people? Hey, hey. things are hard, though. Things are tough. You can ah, to get a job in this Nigeria, you just even can't. And they will sit down. Misery loves company. Yeah. And I noticed that those kind of people, they so let me tell you, something. I do not stay long where such conversations happen. 
I don't want you to contaminate me. Because I decided very, very early that because I would, I would not like to. I sat down. So the good thing about working in the kind of place I started my career, um, a global firm was you got to see everybody, the high, the low, the medium, the, the billionaires, you know, you're sent to different client sites. Ah, and we even have some white people. They'll come to us. You know, of course, I'm the junior at the meeting at that time, so I'm not saying much. But there I'm observing. These people are literally almost shaking. Help us. We want to set up in Nigeria. We, need, we have goals. You know, and I'll tell myself, in this Nigeria, uh-uh. See people shaking that we should help them establish. And then me, I'll now say, I want to leave this Nigeria. How? <laughs> there must be something here. Because I saw it live. There's value here. But it depends on which team you choose to belong to. I, I'll go for meetings, both home and abroad. I'll look, ah, but these Nigerians that are living, the, the Nigerians like Mr. Wally Oshi, ah, they don't have two heads now. I'm choosing that side. The team of, I, I said, this is who I want to be and I will get there. I will achieve it. Very early on, I decided that. And I, there are, I'm using Mr. Wally Oshie a lot because you can see him. He's real. You can touch him. You can walk up to him after the meeting. Hmm. Because if I mention some other names, some of you might not even know, but he's here. He set up an insurance firm. Some of us think it's only Oyibo people that can do that. A Nigerian, a young man set out and he did it. And guess what? It's PLC. It's listed for those that understand what I mean. So you can do it. He doesn't have two heads. Do not be a part of team pity party. Ah, and, they, and these, two, these two teams, they talk different. When you are with the pity party people, they are constantly talking problems. Problems. But, ah, did you hear? Ah, that girl, hey! Once she resumed, after six months, they told her, leave. This one, she started the business. After two months, shut down. This one, did the, uh, uh. I noticed that when I'm around the people that they make it, they just talk, they say, they'll talk about the problem and then they go, so this is how it should have been corrected. This, I mean, if, 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 if I were going to do it, I'll do it this way. I mean, let's analyze this. So if this was done, if, if they had set up um, this sort of agreement at the beginning, you know, they're talking solutions. They're talking the way forward. They're talking how to break the ceilings. They're talking how to set up new things. That's the team I belong to. You can join me today. Yes. 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 Guard your ears and your heart, oh. Because traditional media will depress you, oh. It will. Traditional media is not, um, is not structured to pump out happy information consistently. They won't sell. Sorry, Chico, I don't mean. <laughs> but, you know, they like that. Da -da, breaking news. 100 dead in dun dun dun. Ah! Then everybody's looking. Ah, have they said it here? Ah, let's go to the next station. That's, 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 it, it gets them clickbait, all those things. That's what gets them. Just go and say, ah, so, so, so company, custodian insurance are now listed. On the Nigeria Stock Exchange, people have moved. And, but I've seen that it's even a human thing. We're just wired for, we like bad news. Ah, she died. Ten died. Oh. But you now hear that ten people started business. You know, and that's what made me start my talk show. How many of us have, how many, how many, who have seen my talk show before? All right. It's called Binging with Game Changers. Because I got tired of traditional media. And I looked in, at this country and I saw so many amazing career story, um, you know, story, success stories in the corporate space. So many amazing success stories in the entrepreneurship space. And I said, who is telling these stories? I said, I will. My own little solution. Remember I said so? My own little. I never knew that we would become the most syndicated talk show in the country. Now, little me. I'm on NTA Network, the largest network, every TV box in Nigeria. 
who can't watch me, they watch me. You'll be amazed at our numbers outside Lagos. We are on Africa Magic Family, your best and bestest. Silverbird, TVs, everywhere. The brands. You know, I mean, at the beginning, they didn't want to touch us. But then after, they, they saw that these guys are not here to play. They know what they are doing. So, my last point. Yeah, yeah. Have you learned something? Who has learned something? My last point is explore, evolve, and remain inquisitive. Because nothing is impossible to you. Sweetheart, you can be anything you want to be. Yes, in Nigeria. Please, I'm not saying you shouldn't jack bao. Because this one that I've been saying Nigeria, Nigeria, some people are like, mm. if you feel you have to live abroad, you can be anything you want to be anywhere. Some of us are here, Sha. Because <laughs> we see gold on the streets of Nigeria. But if you feel that, you know, you feel strongly that you need to go out there, the world, the world is your oyster. You can shine anywhere. But when I say explore and evolve, if anybody had told me 10 years ago that I would be on TV, I would have laughed, hissed. You, it, what I always thought media was never, ever the plan. It wasn't. Never, ever. But I remained open. I just met someone one day that, you know, I just did a random... You know, we had a fashion party for my jewelry brand, Blanche Glam. So we did a random, you know, interview that I handled. Someone saw the video and he's like, what? You've got to be on TV. Are you joking? I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> look at me. Do I look? I don't, I'm not one of those people. I don't like people to know me. Why should people see me walk into a place and they say, you look familiar? Ew. I'm private. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for attention. People like me, I don't seek attention. You know what we all say now? We like those things. But he kept saying no. He was like, Nigeria needs people like you. It's only, why is it only the negative people that are on TV? And all of you that have things burning, you will say you don't want to be on TV. He's, I don't know, maybe I fell down and hit my head, but let's just say I said yes. And I told him, okay. At least, because he kept telling me what he said, she, you're a natural. She, you will do this thing effortlessly. You are so passionate about success, inspiring people, talking to people. Why not package it properly and put it on TV? Get yourself into people's homes. Not that you are begging them to buy a CD. I said, okay. Let's, I don't want to be 65 years old. And then I'm watching some talks and I'm like, ah, and they told me to do that thing. Oh. Honestly, that was the only reason I did it. I said, okay, let's do season one. When we are done, at least you leave me alone and I'll go my way, you go your way. Now, we're, these are 60, we're running season five nationwide. Yeah. Yeah, because, because it, it, it went on TV and all of a sudden I'm getting calls from everywhere. Oh my gosh, we just watched your show. We're so inspired. In fact, ah, I'm, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to start, you know, I'm there in my house sleeping and I can speak to everybody in the nation. Oh, I loved that. And I was going to continue. But had I ever seen myself, uh, did I ever dream of TV? No way. It was for, I always saw TV as being for people that wanted attention. So all I'm telling you today is be open. Be open. Today, you might not be someone that thinks you can ever own, own, own a business. All you think of is, oh, I just want to get a job and this and that. But you know what? Tell your neighbor, be open. When people tell you, you're good at this. You know you do this very well. Listen. That has really helped me. Because, and I must say this, I, I mean, I found out eventually that, I don't know how true this is, but women, they, some people call it imposter syndrome. But there's something we suffer from as women especially, 
that we just don't think we're enough, that we're good enough. I don't know. But we just think other people can do it, but you just say, ah, no, me, I can't. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? People are telling you, yeah, you're good at this, you're good at this. You say, me? No, <laughs> no, not me. But, you know, research, I found out that men are usually not like that. It's usually women. I don't know why. I don't know why. But I'll tell you the secret to how I have overcome that thing. I don't know if imposter syndrome is the right term, but it's something I've noticed in women. But you know what I've done? I listen to people. When I start hearing people saying, Sheyi, you are good at this. Sheyi, you did this so well. My antenna is up. Because I know, so a lot of times I don't believe in myself well enough. But when people are saying, ah, 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 I just start noting it. Eh. Ooh, right. Then I'll now go to people I'm close to. I'll say, is it true that I do this thing well? Do they like, ah, Sheyi, you did, imagine, don't say, you didn't know. I'll be like, eh, my kind of new. Oh, <laughs> effortlessly you do it. Eh? It's like you, you, I mean, you realize you don't even know yourself that well. But I'm grateful that I listen. I always, till tomorrow, even my kids, they say something, mommy, you do this so well. And I just go and start thinking, eh, I do this so well. Hmm. That might be a business, you know. Yes, I, I love to start businesses, as, you, as you've noticed. Yeah. But listen, listen to people. And also men. Because I know that some men are thinking, mm, it's not only women. No. Even me, I doubt myself too. In fact, I feel like I, I, I don't have any gifts. I'm useless. Do you believe that at a, point, at a point in my life, I always said I had no gift? Uh, yeah, I was convinced. And then anytime, you know, because I love church. Anytime I went to church, they would not say, prayer points. That gift that you have, tell God to help you to... Give it to the world. When people are praying, I'll be like, God, show me. Why don't I just have any gifts? Help me. Give me just one gift so I can shine. Till one day, someone said to me, She is your mouth now. You don't know. It's your mouth. Uh -uh. I'm like, are you joking? She Once you tell people, buy this. Do this. You just have a way. Hey. I started taking it serious. Oh. That's why today I sell. I sell knowledge. I sell jewelry. I sell, I, sell, I sell things. I sell, in fact, right now I'm selling. I'm selling the good life to you. <laughs> yeah, because you have no reason to be poor or to be a failure. There's too many opportunities around. Too many. And the world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for your magic. No, no, but that thing that is burning in you, nobody can do it like you. Don't rob the world of you. If you do not do that thing, nobody else will do it the way you will do it. We know that there are many cleaning companies already. But when you start your own, you will be cleaning the way other people have not cleaned. Yes. Start. I tell people, people that don't live their dreams and let them die, I tell them they are thieves. Yes, you're a thief when you don't do Because you just robbed the world. You just robbed an organization of the best lawyer they could have had. You just robbed an organization of the best CFO, chief, finance, chief financial officer they could have had. You just robbed the world of the best fashion company that could have existed. Don't be a thief. Don't be a thief. The world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for what is burning on your inside. I don't know. I gave them a graph. I don't know if it's available. It's okay if it's not. As I close. Is the graph available, please? Some statistic. Yes. Hmm. So, what are we looking at? Number of poor people in Nigeria by zone, right? So, the green is for poor people. You can see color green, right? The green represents poor people, and the, the gray area is for the total population. As you can see, you have about, in the Northwest, you have about 45.5 million people, out of 49 million poor. You know, see the Northeast, North Central. 
20.2 poor out of 21. See, who's going to solve these problems? The white man, they already have, the white people have enough problems though. They're not going to come and solve this for us. The business that you start is going to help some of these people in green. The company that you get, gain employment in and you help to grow is going to solve some of these problems. It will create jobs. It will help for schools to be built. Because the, can you, you, Do you know why we have more green in the north? It's education. It's education. When, when, when there's no education, it's hard for people to actually be wealthy. They are waiting for you. Thank you very much. Can we give her a bigger applause? Thank you very much. Let's have our seats. Thank you. I believe we've picked more than one thing from all that she has shared. More than seven. Twenty-five. Seven raised to power n, where n is infinity. Aha. I know that, right. So, there's one thing she said that I want to reiterate before we take our next meal from the next speaker. When she was making point two, she said, be excited about meeting people. Since you entered this room, how many contacts have you exchanged? How many people have you walked up to and said, I'd like to know you more. Tell me more about yourself. I'd like to tell you more about myself. You have not done that. And you plan to live here as early as possible without doing that. Then you ask yourself, that mentor's conference, self, I can't even remember what they said. How will you remember when you did not establish connections? Remember at the beginning when I was introducing distinguished guests in this room, if we have the floor to take every single one of them, there is leverage built by connections that every one of them have enjoyed. And thanks to Mr. Wale Oshi, you have that room now. If you leave this place without that connection, it is your own pot of what? I did not say that. You said it. All right. To go very quickly to the next speaker, please join me to go through the profile of Chico. Can we appreciate him? Media, please, can we project his profile? Chikuma Alikwekwe, popularly known as Chico, holds a BA Honours degree in Theatre Arts from the University of Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. On his return to the UK following graduation in Nigeria, he went on to study film and media at the University of North London. He returned to Nigeria fully in 2006 and three years later became one of the pioneer members of the then brand new radio station Classic FM 97.3 anchoring the very popular TDS, The Drive Time Show. He was appointed programs director at Classic FM 97.3 in 2011 and group programs director in 2015, a position he holds till date. Chico has featured in a number of big screen movies and television series, including A Soldier's Story, Tales of Ish and Isha, Guy Man, Tinsel, Battleground, and The Olive. Also a voiceover artist, Chico is the voice behind many mainstream adverts and audio activations on both domestic and international media platforms. Being adept and comfortable at public speaking and moderating, Chico has hosted countless high-profile private and corporate events. He has consulted for a number of radio stations and is a facilitator at the City Media Academy. 
He recently launched Chico's Radio Workshop, a program for would-be radio presenters. Chico is a prolific writer and director of short stories, theater and audio drama, and poems. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly give a warm welcome to Chukuma Chico Aliguekwe. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm standing on all the protocol that has been established earlier today, and I'm going to nod my head in the direction of Mr. Wallace's table. Um, <laughs> right. You know, when, when I was watching the video earlier, I was like, uh, you know, I'm seeing all these, these big names in Nigeria. And I'm a little bit like, all right, this is going to be a tough act to follow. Um, but the truth is, it's always easy, things like this, when you're speaking from the heart. Um, uh, talking to young people, mentoring young people, I, it's not something I do consciously, but I think that deep down somewhere there is a teacher in me because... I never want to miss a teachable moment. So when it happens that time, I'm like, this is a moment. Do you know that da-di-da-da-da-da-da-da-da? So note number one would be, look out for those teachable moments. For young people, we get these things all the time. And I want to just put this out there where... You know, someone comes up and, you know, we say, do it this way and, 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 and do it that way. And, I'm sure that somewhere at the back of your mind is something that, you know, you practice it, doesn't quite work, or you try to put it out there, and, okay, but they said da di da 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 and it can be really difficult. Yep, can I get a witness? Yeah, I know, I know. We've been there, we've done that, and we've got the T-shirt, and guess what? We are still learning. At 57 years old, I'm still learning. I found everything that she shared here this morning so very useful to me at 57. You sit there and you see this guy who's sitting at the top of the food chain in radio and this, that, that and the other. But the truth is, standing in front of you is someone who is still in many respects, finding his way, learning from the things that are said, not wanting to miss any moments, scared also of people like yourself, because at 57 in radio, there's all these whippersnappers who want to take my spot. So, <laughs> if I'm not still evolving at 57, learning new things, trying to maintain staying in that position, you guys are going to just put me out to pasture. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so there's a lesson to be learned there. And the lesson is the learning never, ever stops. So it's got to be a lifestyle. It's got to be something that becomes a part of you so that those moments are never missed. Now, the Chinese have a saying. It's actually a curse. There are three Chinese curses, but the most popular one is, may you live in interesting times. There are these other ones, there's the one that says, may the government take an interest in you. That's not a good thing. But I think you guys qualify, you qualify when we say, may you live in interesting times, because these times are very very interesting. So, the first point, don't miss any lessons on your way and continue to learn. That process is continuous. The second point is, when you're in that zone, there will always be things you can pick up that you can add to what you have already. And because I'm a radio presenter and from a theater arts background as well, 
I'm going to tell a story. Some of us might have heard the story before because someone mentioned it to me before I came in here. And it's the story of Nwe Belako. Now, Nwe Belako is the child of a sheep. Now, this sheep had five children. Nwe Belako was the last of five children. The oldest was Egweri, there was Dumje, there was Kemka, and there was Pakoba. So one day, the leopard comes to the sheep and says to the sheep, I've just had a new baby, and you must give me one of your five children to come and babysit for me. Now, how many of us know that the sheep is one of the leopard's favorite meals? So the sheep was thinking to herself, right, well, any of these five children I send to go and babysit for the leopard is probably not coming back. So the sheep thought about it and lined up her children. And starting with the oldest, Egwiri, she started to ask them, how many times will something happen to you before you will learn? Egwiri said five times. And she said, right, stay aside. Came to Bakoba the next. How many times will something happen to you before you will learn? Bakoba said four times. And so it went on until she got to Dumje, who was the second to the last. And Dumje said, just once. Said, mm. Then it was the turn of Mwe Belako. And Mwe Belako said, hmm, Mommy, I won't even wait for that thing to happen to me. When it's happening to others, I will learn it that time. And so the sheep said, Good, you are going to go and babysit for the leopard. So she sent Mwe Belako to go and babysit. Mwebelako set about her chores at the leopard's place and uh, was doing everything that the leopard asked her to do. But Mwebelako was watching every single move. She didn't miss a beat. And in the course of the time she was there, she realized that the leopard would normally go out mm, evening time and come back with a kill and then would place this kill on her left then place her baby on her right. Then the leopard would get up in the night after sleeping a little bit and with her right paw, grab the food, rip it to pieces and eat it. So Mwebelakon took note of this. The days passed and one day, the leopard came back without a kill. Mwebelakon took note. Remember, Mwebelakon said that as that thing is happening, to others, meaning where Balako was very observant. Day two passed, the leopard came back, no kill. Day three, day four, and on day four, as the leopard came back without a kill, the leopard then said to where Balako, tonight, you must sleep on my right. So where Balako was like, hmm. That night, Mwebelako lay down and pretended that she was asleep. When the leopard fell asleep and placed its child where it normally places it, Mwebelako got up, carried the leopard's child, and lay it on the leopard's right, and then lay down on the leopard's left. As usual, leopard got up in the night, grabbed her baby, not knowing it was her baby, and gobbled it up then went into a deep sleep. My Belako got up, ran all the way home to her mom, the sheep. I said, mommy, look what has happened. So the sheep says, right, go back, lie down. I know what to do. So she goes back, lays down. Very early that morning, the leopard gets up, starts looking for her baby. She looks everywhere in the house, can't find her baby. As she comes outside, she sees the sheep, the king of the animals and the entire animal kingdom were lined up outside. And the sheep comes forth and says, well, leopard, you have eaten your own baby. So there's no more any baby for my child to babysit. I can now go home with my child, where Belako, and turns to the king, isn't it so? And the king says, yes, it is so. And she took Mwebelako, went home, and they lived happily ever after. Now, <laughs> you know, where I come from, when a storyteller is done to telling a story, he ends it with Chakbi 
And he to whom the story has been told responds with war. So here I go. Chapi. Boom. But what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that question. How many times will something happen to you before you will learn? Even a baby, it starts to crawl. And then one day, it gets up and takes one tentative step. It stumbles and falls. But it tries again, doesn't it? And it tries again. And it tries again. And eventually, that one step turns to two. The two steps, three, four, five. And look at us today, taking as many steps as it takes to keep walking. So the lesson number two really is, starting from the learning process where I started, is to be observant. Because if you're not, the very thing that might truncate where your destiny lies might be right in front of you and you won't see it. If you're not observant and watching out, you might be falling for the same mistakes over and over and over again. Everything that we yield our members to, that thing that we practice on a daily and never take note, that thing becomes your master. So, if it is laziness, not getting up and going, it will stop you and prevent you from realizing your potential. If it's procrastination and you yield to it, it will stop you from getting where you could have got to. It could be that you're quick to anger. If you don't check it, it will stop you from getting where you need to go. For those of us here who are, who are Christians, an example would be not Abraham, Moses. With all the promises, with everything he achieved, taking the Israelites out of Israel and so on. I'm not trying to get religious. I just, there's a lesson here. For everything that he achieved getting the Israelites out, he never got to go into the promised land. He saw it, but he never stepped foot in there. And it was simply because of temper. He was moved to anger and disobeyed God and did something he wasn't meant to do. And in that moment, it was gone. There are people languishing in jail today, people with death sentences hanging over them simply because they lost their temper. So they lashed out. And in one moment of temper, a life was lost or irreparable damage occurred. Even happiness as an emotion. I often say that the difference between sanity and insanity is the extent to which we are able to control our emotions. Recently, I was coming back from Port Harcourt and I was on a flight. There was this gentleman sitting next to me, a young guy, and he was chewing gum loudly. You know that chewing gum where they're chewing and then you're popping it in your mouth. Look, I I felt like I was going to die, honestly. And, you know, I was a little bit embarrassed about saying, listen, young man, you know, so I couldn't say that. But I sat there seething and having mental images of using my elbow to just, my friend, will you stop? You know, but obviously I didn't do it because I'm sane, thank God. But, <laughs> but, you know, someone who is insane will probably lash out in that moment and be disinhibited. I had all sorts of images. I saw myself pinning him down and saying, listen, a guy shouldn't chew chewing gum and I'll squeeze his mouth open and take it out of his mouth. You know, but I didn't do it. I did think it though, confession. You know, so your emotions as well, those things can stop you. So who are you? That's what I've been speaking to so far. Who are you? How are you interacting with the world around you? How are you interacting with the world around you? The more keyed in you are to the world around you, 
the goings on around you, the more likely you're going to see opportunity. The more likely you will spot danger before the next man, the more likely you'll be able to get ahead, the more likely you are to create solutions. And that is point number three. There are two inventions that, I, that stand out for me. The first one, please don't be alarmed. <laughs> the first one is right here. Yes, zips. Most of the zips you will find have the YKK written on it. Who's, who's ever seen that? There's probably lots of them in this room. YKK. Now, that person was one of the earliest inventors of the zip. And today, the YKK zips are all over the world. That's one. The second one that stands out for me is Velcro. Who knows what Velcro is? Yeah, Velcro is simply that thing where you press, you've got them now, now all sorts of things, travel bags, shoes, clothes, whatever it is, you just press it together and then it's difficult to, to pull it apart again. Someone invented that too. But what drove those inventions? It was necessity, it was seeing a problem. Before the zip was invented, there were things like buckles, uh, sewing stuff together. How many of us have seen Game of Thrones? Some of those clothes that they're wearing, those things, you see where they even hold the armor together with strings and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, but someone then invented a zip. And the zip has endured till now. Someone invented Velcro. Velcro has endured till now. But guess what? The world today is still this place where there are problems that you can solve. Nigeria is beset with problems and challenges. But you see, where there are problems, there are what? Opportunities. And those opportunities lie in providing solutions. And because each one of us is unique, that thing that Mr. A will see, Mr. B might not. Because our life experiences are all very, very different. Where we're coming from, the experiences we have had, those things channel us different and give us different perspectives. So to tie everything that I've set up to now together, it is about knowing who you are, being aware of yourself, being in touch and interacting with your environment such that you are able to see, then seize opportunity. And that's what it is. Opportunities will never ever dry up completely. Even during wartime, there is what? Opportunity. Someone sat down and said, right, well, this machete people have been using since to kill people during war. I mean, if men love war, they're going to fight anyway. So if I invent something that can kill maybe a bit quicker, I might make some money here. Then, next up, the arrow. Because the arrow means I can now either kill a human being or an animal or whatever without having to get what? Close. Absolutely. Opportunity, remember? Then someone else said, all right, these arrows, it might hit the person and the person, I mean, or the animal might carry that arrow and run away. All right, what can I do? And someone says, right, well, if I could invent some sort of projectile that moves quicker, 
and has a greater impact when it gets there than da 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 And thus was born the what? The gun. And from the gun today, where are we? We're at a place where <laughs> we see it in the movies. Someone could, in fact, I think it's Israel. Israel has, a, I forget what it's called now, but Israel has something that's like this net that's cast on, over the entire country where if you fire a missile or anything, they can deploy it and it will bring it down before it comes down. How many of us know this? Absolutely. The atom bomb, the nuclear bomb, and all these are inventions. Yes, they are of the horrible kind, but these were people who were seeing opportunity and they provided solutions. We should all be in the solution providing business because if we're there, trust me, there's opportunity to make money. Anything for me that really doesn't translate to making money, I I make a little bit like, (laughs) you know. I love things that mean making money. Even sat there listening to Shei and having interaction with these young people, there are things like, hmm, ah, there's an opportunity there, okay. You know, and I said I was going to speak to Mr. Oshin after now because there's an opportunity. I'm seeing something I could do with custodian on the radio. So, I've marked it. I wrote it down there. I've got his card. I'm certainly going to be ringing him up. What's driving me? What's driving me is that I can provide a solution and I can make money from it. So, I'm certainly going to do it. And providing the solution, a byproduct of that is that there's value in there. There's value in what I am saying. When those things tie together, where the value is providing a profit and so on, it's a win-win for everybody. So, who are you? Who do you know? There might be people sitting here today who are friends, uh, 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 like Shay said, if you, if, if you are um, connected to whoever, you might, your connections might reach all the way up to Asu Rock. And the next man doesn't have that connection. So how are you going to use it? Are you just going to go there and be like, eh, uh, uncle, uh, you know, uh, and then he asked the question, because I always ask this question, what can you do? Uh, anything. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Anything is nothing. Anything is nothing. There's something in every single one of us. There's not a single one of us here who is bereft of a talent or a gift. Not one of us in this room. And that is the beauty of life. But if you follow what I'm saying this morning, where you are in touch with who you are, you're interacting with your environment and the world that you live in, you will then find that that's your gift. When it ties in and you see opportunity, it is that very gift that makes that way. And everything just sort of lines up. And I'm not saying that it's, it's easy. Neither am I saying that it's magic. I'm simply telling you the space that you need to be in, the state of mind that you need to be in. And there's a unique advantage that young people have. That unique advantage is time. Time. So, whereas for myself, and I hate to say what I'm about to say, but I will say it. Whereas for myself, at 57 years old, mm, well, no, I'm not all I can be, mm, but I'm certainly most of what I could be, in a manner of speaking. Uh, I suppose a call could come 
from Asu Rock or my governor in my state and say, okay, Chico, we want you to come and be a uh, uh, commissioner for information or media or something, something. I will say no, but it's an opportunity. Um, and that, that if I took, could be this life-changing thing because it opens certain doors and so on and so on and so on. So, so there is still potential. But you see, for young people, the unique advantage you have is time. Because with time, there are mistakes you can make and learn from them quickly and then start now charting your graph properly. Being in touch with who you are, like I said, such that you're able to take advantage of opportunity. I know a young man in Surulere. I'm not going to say his name, but this young man, he has, he has this place off, off Adenro Gusoya. And he makes clothes, not clothes, he makes the, like these, um, I was actually going to wear one of his outfits this morning, but, but um, and I, something came up this morning and I ran a little late and just had to throw something else on because of this moment. But he makes like, you know, these cargo pants that have pockets at the sides and stuff. He makes all these, these outfits, sometimes he uses um, calico and so on and so on. There are very few of his clothes here in Nigeria. And one time, I, I met this guy when I was doing, um, I was a facilitator for CD City Media Academy. And we've stayed in touch. So one day I go to his office and I see he's in front of a laptop and he's clicking, and I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing funny villages in Italy. Villages in Italy. Now, this young man makes these clothes in Surulere. He doesn't sell them here. He sends them to this village in Italy. Some get, find their way to Italy. Some find their way to, uh, where else did I say? I saw Italy. I saw Austria. You know, some, some very obscure European villages, really. And the young man has this, uh, I forget the name of the, you know, this, this Mercedes, they just came out that looks like a, it's a cross between an SUV and a, and, 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 and a, a regular car. This one that has some sort of funny shape. They're very expensive. That car is probably, uh, I'd say that car is probably about 90, between 90 and 100 million. I forget the name of the car. He has one of those. He never drives it because he says that the, the police give him a hard time. And so he moves around Lagos with the, at least a, a Corolla, Uber Corolla, those tiny Corolla cars. But he owns that Mercedes. When you go to that place in Surulere, it's parked out there. So I got talking to him. He saw opportunity one day, somewhere online, and saw that they were looking for something. They had some festival and da 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 da, -da. He sent a sample and one thing, one thing, one thing. And today, he sends these clothes to Italy and is sitting here in Lagos making money in Forex. The young man is rich. He's, he's 27. So awareness and being in touch is a very, very important thing. I, I remember one day talking to my daughters. I have three daughters. The oldest is 22. They're 22, 20, and 17. You know, and we're going somewhere, we're in a, in a, in a, in a car in the UK. And you see them, they put the headphones on, and they're staring at their phones or iPads and stuff. So I'm like, you know what, everybody, you know, t take these things off, t put the phones down. And I'm like, you see, tomorrow, when we're going to this place that we're going to now, you're not going to know your way there. Eh, hey, daddy, there's ways. Yeah, I know there's ways. I know there's Google Maps. I know those things exist. But trust me, nothing trumps good old traditional knowing your way. Ways and Google Maps can be switched off at the punch of a button. And if you're not in control of that button, somebody else is. So if they switch it off, suddenly you are lost. You're not going to know your way. And you're going to have to rely on somebody else. God forbid that the person you then rely on 
is a bad person because if it is, you're done for. And this is a stark, practical example of what I mean when I talk about interacting with your environment. You see, the brains, if you, if you had to reduce the brain's function to one single thing, one single thing, it would really be to keep its host safe. That's what it would come down to. This is the reason why, as I'm stood in front of the hall here talking, if we all suddenly started hearing gunfire out there or a large explosion, you would find that suddenly nothing I'm saying here would have your attention anymore. You would switch instantly into fight or flight mode. Instantly. The brain's primary function is to keep its host safe. And in today's world where there's all sorts of information bombarding us, right now you're sitting here looking at me, you're seeing this, you're seeing where it says a co hotel, you're seeing the fire exit, you're listening to me, there's information on your phones, there's information you're reading from the faces all around you, and all of that. Now, the brain can't process all these things simultaneously, so it will unconsciously start to prioritize. It is only the most important thing moving towards keeping you safe that it's going to register. Now, if our brain is wired to function that way, why are you then going to live your life not really in touch with the goings-on around you? I'm going to try and be a bit diplomatic about what I want to say to bring the point home a little bit more. You see, Lagos, there's a school of thought that says that you can accurately assess the level of social evolution of a society by studying their driving culture. So, we live in a place where you can park anywhere you like. You can stop and pick up a passenger or drop off a passenger wherever you like. You can conduct yourself whilst driving a vehicle on Lagos roads any how you like. And it does happen. I mean, now the roads are free because of the petrol thing, and I love it. But typical Lagos, that's what you have. And I make bold to say that the reason you have that is because there's a plethora of people who are living their lives without any regard whatsoever for how they are interacting, impacting on their environment around them. Now, you see this. We're going controversial now. This is the difference. It's the basic difference between humans and the lesser animals. They haven't got to think about that. They just carry on. So that those of us who will be properly equipped to make it are the ones who take note of those things, who interact with those things. I'm on record on the radio as saying that there are too many people here in Lagos who really don't have any business living or operating in a cosmopolitan environment. If you took them to a rural area, they'd probably flourish. But in a cosmopolitan environment where the things you do impact directly on your neighbor, such people are really more of an impediment and an obstacle than any sort of asset. And I'm calling on you young people today to be different to that. The manner in which we conduct ourselves, the manner in which we interact with our environment, the level to which we plot what we're doing with a mind to opportunity and providing solution, it becomes you the more you practice it. 
And when the time comes, you won't miss it. But the more you fail to practice it, you end up like those people who do not realize that in a cosmopolitan environment, stopping my car at a junction where cars move in and out is going to have a knock-on effect. They don't have any thought for the fact that Lagos is already over-congested. And so that any obstacle in the free flow of traffic means that traffic is going to build up very quickly. And that that in itself also has a knock-on effect. They're oblivious to these things. Nobody in this room, having heard what I, a young person in this room, is going to be of that ilk. And now's the time to start to practice it. Because if you don't, yeah, you'll end up like those people, remembering that whatever it is that you yield your members to and practice regularly, the same thing becomes It continues to grow. Uh, I think it was a, I can't remember where I read this, but they said inside a person there are two wolves. And the one you feed the most gets stronger, while the one you don't feed at all continues to get weak. Eventually, the one, anything that doesn't get fed dies, doesn't it? Exactly, but the one you feed will grow and flourish. So which one are you feeding? Who are you? Are you an asset to Lagos and Nigeria, or are you a liability? There's no middle ground. You're either here or there. What are you going to contribute? How are you going to impact positively? How are you going to change the story? You see, in there lies opportunity. And this is... Immediately I decided I was going to come down here. This is the thing that I want, wanted most to drive. And that's why everything I say this morning is and will revolve around that. There was a time I said I was just going to come here and tell my story. Um, uh, you know, and I was born in England, and then one thing, one thing, uh, yes. all that changed, and I decided that what I was going to do in speaking to young people this morning is to let them know that it's not late, the situation isn't hopeless. There is opportunity. And that it really is in your hands. But it is dependent on the things that you will hear from the speakers this morning. Because clearly the speakers have been very cleverly and carefully chosen not just today, but also going back. We saw some of them here, and I saw some really useful stuff. So when you take all of that, and you extrapolate and take the things that we're saying this morning, you'll find that it puts you in this unique position. So I'll move away from that a little bit now and start to land. So yeah, we all have these gifts. We all have these talents. Sometimes, finding it can be a bit difficult. One of the things I've heard helps is to find what you're passionate about. Uh, because when you're passionate about something, you enjoy doing it. You know, I enjoy radio. I enjoy acting. You know, putting on a performance. I, I'm a creative. Daddy wanted me to study law because he was a lawyer. Um, I was like, man, all those books. Because my, my, my memories of my dad, he was always hunched over in his study with these big books. And I'm talking really thick books, you know, and he was always studying. And I was like, nah, 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 nah. You know, that's just not me. But you see, life has a sense of humor. Because now, as a radio presenter, I mean, if I'm going to go on the radio and sound intelligent, I've got to do what? read and research as an actor if i'm going to go in front of the camera and deliver something convincing i'm going to have to read that script and research that character 
So I, I suppose daddy got me in the end. But, but you know, luckily, I am passionate about those things. And it's a fantastic place to be, believe me, when you're doing what you're passionate about, what you enjoy doing, but you can also make a living from it and provide a service, provide value, be it value by entertainment, be it value by solving social problems, whatever it is, or be it value by getting to a point where you get invited to things like this to talk to young people. So try and identify that thing that you are passionate about. You know, there's so many things, especially in today's world. We didn't have these mobile phones when we were growing up. We didn't have social media. We didn't have the ability to sit here and interact with people all over the world or click a button and, and it goes viral and everybody all over the place sees, sees this thing at, at once. We had none of that. Some people say that it was better then because the human relations, you know, you look in a person's eye face to face and, and, and the communication is, is, is more authentic, if you like. But remember, I spoke to opportunity. So this is the world we live in now. How can that work for you? Remembering that the dinosaurs became extinct because they couldn't adapt to their changing environment. So if we stay still, don't adapt, evolve, we will become obsolete, we will become extinct. You are living for this time and this age. And this is the terrain and the playing field that you've been born into. How are you going to use it? Where does the opportunity lie? In the playing field now. What can you provide? When you sit down and project and think about, say, five years from now, where are you going to be? More importantly, who are you going to be? Trust me, it depends very, very largely on how you're interacting and observing your environment. I love what she said when she talked about, you know, you see the Nigerian, you know, they talk about it and you're just like, because there's a lot of negativity. You could focus on that. But you see, in that ne negativity, you could be the answer. You could be the solution. You might be the one who provides the solution and makes money from it. Remember, can I get it? Who doesn't want money? Honestly, we all do. You know, it makes life a lot easier. I would rather, I would rather have money and have problems than not have money and have problems. Because you see, <laughs> because essentially problems and challenges are par for the course. I don't think they're ever, ever going to stop. They, it's like there's this conveyor belt of them. They just keep coming. It never, ever stops. So why not be rich and a solution provider and then the problems are coming? I mean, obviously, the richer you are, it sometimes can be that the bigger problems you get. However, I don't want to mention the big C, but major health challenges do not select. They afflict the poor and they afflict the rich. But you see, the rich, I do believe that the rich have a better opportunity because it's going to happen and they can get out of here very quickly, you know, and, and get to somewhere where the health care that they're going to get will be better. So if health challenges are going to afflict the rich and the poor, why not be rich? 
when the health challenges come so that you've got that added advantage. You know, it really is important. So chart your graph. You've got time on your hands. Not too much time. Speaking to time, I have an uncle. We call him Delay. That's his nickname. Mm. And he, he, would also say, he would always say, Ha! Delay is dangerous. So, because of that, we started eventually calling him... I, in fact, I grew up knowing him as Uncle Delay. And he would say, Emengwangwa, Emegarodachi. Emengwangwa translates that uh, if, you, if, you, if you do it expediently, you will avoid obstacles or things that would have stopped you from doing it. So he'll come and he'll say, hmm, hmm, if you're sitting down one day like this eh, and suddenly corn and roasted pear, corn, they hungry you. Mm, you better eat it that time because delay is dangerous. That, and he's right. Because how many of us are aware that the next minute is not promised? It's not. The next minute is not promised. So if it occurs to you, remember, delay is what? Dangerous. But you see, if, you, if it occurs to you, you see the opportunity, it's there, and you grab it immediately. Anything that might have stopped you from grabbing it doesn't have a chance You've taken it out of the way because you moved. You didn't sit back thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Which reminds me of another one my mom said. Now, uh, this is a bit more difficult. But you see, when, when, when you're translating these things, doing it in pidgin gives it a bit, it, it loses less of its meaning. So I'll try and do that. That a person who it's like, yeah, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Never does it. Never. I'll do it after. After. You see, you kind of never get there. So, delay is dangerous. If it occurs to you, if you see it, if it's there, my brother, my sister, move. Because delay is dangerous. Absolutely. Today's world is moving very, very quickly. Time isn't waiting for anyone. It's moving a lot faster now. So, I'm going to charge you to know who you are, be in touch with your environment, particularly here in Nigeria, so that you can see opportunity. Think of yourself as an asset, not a liability. The opportunity will present. Don't delay. Grab it. Get in there. And win. That's all I've got for you this morning. Thanks a lot for listening. Can we make the applause louder? Thank you. You may please have your seat. Um, Chico, will you please permit me? I want to try to imitate you. Delay. Somebody used the right way to pronounce dangerous. Dangerous. So I want us to say it that way. I think it will resonate better. Delay is dangerous. Remember when I came earlier and I mentioned something Shay said about exchanging, about me ex being excited to meet people. I want to give us two to three minutes. In those two to three minutes, you have the opportunity to stretch reach out to the restroom, and just move around. 
Delay again is dangerous. Let's see how many people will come back with additional contacts in those two to three minutes. Your time starts now. For those of us joining us online, we're going to take a short break to stretch before we take the last meal from the last speaker for today. Thank you.
I see that nobody wants to be on the, on the wrong side of delay. It's very good to ensure that no matter how dangerous delay is, it doesn't catch you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to come around and have a seat. I see that we are dealing with delay very proactively, and, and that's good to know. So let's come around and have a seat so that we can resume the sessions before we call it a day. Let's come around and have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's come around and have a seat. For those who have taken a break also online, we're resuming in a few seconds. Let's come around. Please keep those contacts you've made. They may just be your key to a very interesting door in the near future. And just like Shea Banigwe told us, Just like Sheba Nibwe told us, in here are tomorrow's commissioners, presidents, captains of industries, and a whole lot of possibilities gathered in this room. That contact you have collected now can be your key to that door tomorrow. Let's come around and have a seat. We're still going to have a question and answer session after the last speaker after which we're now going to have lunch with all of our speakers, all of the mentors who have come around today. So you're going to have enough time to engage them. But I need us to please come around and have our seats so that we can resume the third session very quickly. It's interesting to see that we are very passionate about dealing with delay. And I like that. Because if delay, if delay decides to be dangerous, then we will decide to show delay how we too can outsmart it. And it's good to meet new people, to make new contacts that could be very helpful both today and in our coming future. There's something I want to repeat from both speakers so far before I invite the third speaker for this session. One interesting statement from Sheiba Nigwe's talk was about making excellence a habit. Making excellence a habit. Excellence is not supposed to be what you do. It is supposed to become who you are. And it is in that that you 
even have the capability to deal with delay, like Chico has told us. It is a lack of excellence as a habit that makes delay catch up with us sometimes. And also from Chico, there's a statement I'd like us to repeat together before we take the next speaker. Are we together? Are we together? I'm going to read it out from here, and we can just repeat it after I say it. He said, in his words, he said, it is not late. Can we say that together? It is not late. The situation isn't hopeless. And there is opportunity. Can we say that together one more time? It is not late. The situation isn't hopeless. And there is opportunity. Just before she steps up and before we take her profile, I want you to ask the person sitting next to you, what opportunity have you seen? Don't look at me. I'm not the opportunity. <laughs> I'm not the opportunity. If the person is just laughing at you, tell the person, put pen and to paper. It's time to start writing those opportunities. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking the third speaker very shortly. We've heard from Shei Banigbe. We've heard from Chico. And Chico took us to a very roller coaster. You know, that, you know how, you, how a roller coaster looks like? When you are trying to think you're going to land now, but you're not landing yet. And then it goes in. But with some very deep insights that I'm sure we've taken those notes on. We have the third speaker in the room right now, in the person of T.Y. Bello. It's particularly exciting for, for me standing here because there's one song that rings in my head every time. I don't know if it rings in your own head too. If it does, please sing it with me. One, two, go. Aha. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see it? The land is truly green. But the question is, can you see? She has opened our eyes to an extent.
every single man and every single woman. So here's the question. You were in an Uber on your way here today. Do you remember who drove you? Did you make any connection? Did you look at the person? Did you notice whether they were happy or sad? Were they discouraged? Were they... Did you notice their struggles? Did you look around the car? Did you see anything? When you were in traffic, some people were selling you Piotr, Coke, this, that, and the other. Do you ever look at the faces of those that are selling to you? Do you notice their countenance? Do you see people? One of the greatest gifts of life is the ability to see. And one of the missions of your life is to decide to look. Because one of the reasons why we don't see is because we are so selfish and we are so internalized and we are so overwhelmed with ourselves that we've stopped looking. So we don't see the gate man. You don't see your plumber. You don't see the carpenter. You don't even know where they are at. We are so overwhelmed with the issues that we carry that we forget that where we are and as bad as things are, we are absolute solutions to some of the people that surround us. God always makes sure of, of that. So say to your neighbor, are your eyes really open? You have eyes, but can you see? So here's the thing. For the last 23 years of my life, I've lived two lives. I've been a singer and a photographer. I only ever had one job, and it lasted for about four months, where I worked for older consulting. The only job I ever had that was a real job in my life. And even till now, and I'm going to say this because I felt like I, I never talk about this enough, but I think that, one, that was one of the greatest gifts of my life, the launch pad that God gave me to actually spend every single day that I got to spend with Mr. Lake Alder and his team. <sighs> and it's incredible to see that a lot of people that I worked with at that time are still part of his team. And so, because I can see that that is not normal, I recently called Mr. Alder and I said, I need to have a meeting with you. How are you doing it? Do we really see the incredible people that God has placed around us? Do we even look at ourselves to see the gifts, the talents, the phenomenal qualities that we actually possess? Can we own it? Do we see Nigeria with all of its complicated issues and problems, the ones that we don't even know how we're going to solve that we're entering now? But see the opportunities that surround us every day. To see the opportunities that the problems have brought. To see the vacuums that need to be filled. I'm a photographer. And I think that one of the reasons why I have lasted this long in that profession is because I'm a luku luku. I like to look. I like to see. One of my favorite parts of my job is my consultation where I get to spend time with someone for the first time. And I'm asking them random questions, but they don't realize that the questions are just a decoy. I'm actually just looking at them. I'm looking at their muscle spasms. I'm seeing where their face tilts when they smile. I want to see where their dimples are. I want to see what's really beautiful about them. I try to be funny so that they can laugh and I can see their facial structures. I want to see what it looks like when they look up. I want to see the symmetry or the lack of it in their faces. I want to see what they're uncomfortable with, what they are comfortable you know, with, what they are proud of, what they are ashamed of, what they like, what they don't. One of my greatest gifts is not photography. 
I keep telling people, if I ran a photography business, I'd be out of business. Because photography is an art form, and it's become more technical than it's ever been in its history. And so, if my job was to follow technology and constantly evolve with it, I'd be old school by now. But you see, the ability to see is a quality that never gets old. It's a timeless quality. As a Christian, one of the biggest prayers I pray is open my eyes, let me see. Because if you look at your life very well, and look at all the issues that you have in your finances, in your marriage, in your career, in the confusion that you have, it's because you never actually stop to look. Step back and see. I can only teach you what I know. Photography, they say, is the science of light. When you look at a person, you're not seeing a person. What you're seeing is how light falls on them. The quality of light that is falling on them. Is the light soft? Is the light harsh? Do you understand? So if you stood in this room and I looked at you, you'd look totally different from what you look like if you were standing outside, for instance. It'd be a completely different look if you stand under the light of the video man. How you look depends on the light that is shining on you. What kind of light is shining on what you are seeing? This is the harsh, overwhelming light that blurs out everything that you cannot decipher what's really going on. Is it enough? Does it cause you to see contrast? What kind of light is shining on the things that you're having to look at? And so even, those, even though this is important for the kind of work that I do, luckily, I don't have to depend on light. The photographer's superpower is to be able to change the quality of light at will. I have superpower. The same way God can decide that it is time for, it's 12 o'clock, and so the sun must shine from the sky. As a photographer, I have the ability to put the light right on top of the person's head and take a picture that makes it look as if they are standing in the midday sun. I also have the ability to soften light so it looks like they're standing right beside a window. Why? Because every quality of life, light that you place on a subject changes the way that people perceive them. If I want someone to be loved and I want someone to be endearing, I light them very soft. If I want them to look evil and intimidating, I light them from under and I take the camera angle to, the, to below so they look overwhelming and they look angry and they look like they want to kill you. If I want you to feel pity for someone, then there's a way I light them from the top and I take a top position. So what I'm saying is this. Where you are right now and how you're going to move forward to the next thing has everything to do with how you have chosen to see it. Everybody say perspective matters. But what is the point of perspective without light? So what is light? Light is understanding, illumination, the ability to know, the ability to perceive. Understanding, wisdom. All of these things are driven by many things, by empathy, by curiosity, by, you know, many different things. But for once in your life, I want you to take two minutes and I want you to look at yourself and write down five beautiful things that you can see about your life right now. There must be five. I don't care if you run out of money in the bank. Your life does not consist of your bank account. 
I don't care if you just said breakfast yesterday. There's more to your life than the relationship that you have or you don't. Five beautiful things about your life. And it doesn't have to be spiritual. Don't get deep. You can say, I like my nose. You can say, I'm intelligent. It doesn't matter what it is. It is a private thing that you have written down. Because I feel like the world has become so, so fast. And the truth is that because we are so bombarded by imagery over and over again, Instagram, Instagram, TikTok, we are constantly looking. We've become desensitized to seeing. We see more images now in one day than we probably did, our parents probably did in a year. Because every day, before your parents could see images, you had to wait for newspaper to show up. Do you understand? There was probably one photographer who did an interesting image to Miss Matt Cole. You wait. Ah, I wonder what you show next week. You know, images had value in the sense that there was scarcity. But now, in a generation where we are bombarded by images in our lives, WhatsApp. I mean, if parents send them <laughs> ridiculous stuff every day, you have to see this one. No? So what has happened is that people have stopped looking because they see so much every day. And it's the same thing. Life in Nigeria is very complicated. The kind of drama that used to happen, like in a whole year, <laughs> on Twitter, I can happen in one day. So much is happening, so much. There's so much buzzbos that you've lost the ability to actually feel. Let me give an example. You would look and see that somebody was blown up in Borno State, you saw the body scattered. But then you have, you have the ability to scroll to how the Kardashians just bought a new car and move on from that to somebody's new recipe. Meanwhile, 20 years ago, if one person died in Nigeria, it was news for a few days. How many people remember that? So even news and the things that are happening to us no longer have an edge or the impact that they should have. So you have to ask yourself a question. Who have you really become? If you are able to move from a bomb blast to jollof rice recipe to the dress that a Nollywood celebrity wore, in one moment, and you're able to engage all this emotion, um, all this information, have an emotional reaction very quickly, but switch from one emotion to the next, the question is, who have you become? So, dear Nigerian, are you cold? Do you care? Can you see? So we've been put into a machinery that makes it impossible for us to love. How can you love what you cannot see? Even the Bible says you cannot say you, don't, you love God when you cannot love the man that you can see. So seeing has a lot to do with loving. And if love is the greatest and the greatest power that we have as human beings, it means that everything that we are, everything that we become, every success that we really amount to is a fruit of the love that we carry in our hearts. So, what kind of success do we have where we cannot see? 
how do you know when you f- how to fix a problem or the gifts and the talents that you have to fix that problem when you can't even see it? You did not notice that your great man is sad. You don't know that your house up is frustrated. All the signs before they put poison in your food were there, but you did not notice. <laughs> You don't understand that your kids are a little bit more quiet than they were yesterday. We've lost our ability to see. So look at those five things that you've written down. Does anyone want to share their own? Is anyone bold enough? You can quickly just grab the mic or we can get a house mic to anyone that puts up their hands. Okay. Um, first, I wrote, I'll be an icon in the insurance industry. I'll be a great entrepreneur in the fashion space. A great wife, mother to my kids. I'll be kind to people and family and friends around me. And I'll be rich and beautiful, Barbara. Thank you. So what I can say about her is that she's an absolute visionary. She's living in the future. The future of what she desires is actually where she's at. That's what she's seeing. She's seeing tomorrow. Somebody else read their own. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, um, one, I am loved by God. Yes. I have the gift of men. Yes. I can understand things once I put my mind to it. Yes. I am cheerful and helpful. Yes. I am Idoma Lion, the greatest filmmaker. Whoa. Can I have one more person? Let's do this very quickly. Put up your hand. Be bold, be bold, be bold. I wish I had like little gifts to give out to people who are reading stuff. Okay, um, thank you. I wrote down that uh, I am thankful that in spite of the economy, I have two jobs. Yes. I'm happy for my family. Everyone is happy. Yes. I have good health. Yes. I am multi-talented. Yes. And I am smart. And the last one is I have a fine face. You have what? Fine face! Fine face. And he's not lying, no. He's a fine boy. He's a fine boy. (laughs) Look at your list again. And it doesn't matter what you've written. It's true. Nobody can tell you how to see. Nobody can challenge what you've seen. What you've seen it, you've seen it. And everything that you've written down right now is beautiful. And so it does not matter what your disadvantage is at the moment. And it does not matter what your uncertainty is at the moment. And it doesn't matter if what you're earning does not pay the bills at the moment. It doesn't matter if you don't have a strategy for tomorrow that you know will work. How much is the dollar? Did it go up or did it go down a bit? Because sometimes it's so shockingly high, you think ah, it must go down the next day. Even the universe must be like, ah, no, yet it you. But we live in uncertain times, everything is changing. Everything is moving. And when things are fast, it's harder to see. It's just harder to see. And so what do you do to see? I'll teach you what I do. You must learn to slow it down. every single day. A portion, what you know you can commit to, to seeing. For your mental health, 10 minutes a day to write down beautiful things that you are either seeing or that you want to see. And then take out time to actually look. 
to choose to see the beauty in the things that surround you. First of all, and then to choose to see the reality in what surrounds you. You are not an island, you're surrounded by people. And if everything about your life revolves about, around you, your success, your money, your drive, your this, your that, your dreams, your focus, your vision, your this, then what impact is that selfishness having on the people around you? The men that are married, for instance, they need to be away all the time. What impact? Do you really think that the children are appreciating the money you are bringing as much as you do? Look now. Spend a little bit more time with them and see how they respond. And for those that own businesses, do you really see your clients? And have you really, really, really understood how people are responding to your work? Because therein lies the way forward. Because if you can see what is really good about what you do, then you can improve on that. So, me, I found out a long time ago that photography is not what I do. I'm a very okay photographer. I think. I think I'm not bad. I think I'm great. I don't think I'm the best. I know at least 10 photographers in my local government area that are more technically proficient than I am. But how many people have clients that cry every time you give them pictures? Like literally bawl and sob and cry. Or send me flowers. Sometimes they even send me money. Send me perfume. This is like three months after. I get this long message three months after about how that image that you took of my husband and I has changed our marriage. Something came alive that we didn't have before. So I realized when I started to look into my business, to realize that what I do well is not only what I do in photography. I'm a great host. I love to create experiences. And I love people feeling loved. And so, I tie my entire business around that. So, even though I cannot afford a tea set, a whole set of the most expensive teacups, I will save and save and save and save and save to make sure that the teacup that you drink from makes you feel like a king. Why? I want you to experience what it feels like to be honored. When I bring your snacks to you while you have your makeup done, the way I will arrange the fruits, you're going to feel like, yeah, I'm something. What I really sell is honor and love. I'm a hopeless romantic. I sell that too. But definitely not photography. In fact, when I buy new photography equipment and I invest in them, they can sit in my studio for one year. I will not touch it. Because I understand that that's not why my people have come to me. I understand. I have a business. I don't have a phone number on my Instagram. I don't have email. Yet, I'm booked months in advance. How? How? My influence and my reach has grown, but I haven't changed the way I do business. I still do business like I just started. That person that came yesterday must still give word of mouth testimony to how the experience was. And that word of mouth is how the next person is going to come. Even though I've downsized my ability to expand to that, it's because I understand that there's all so much of honor I can give in a year. I can sell a lot of photography, but that experience I'm selling, you can't do too many of it. So because I see there is no photography that I'm doing, I control my expansion. What do you really see about who you are, where you've been, 
and where you are going. Your investment of time in actually observing and engaging with the information that comes to you in looking at the things that surround you, that are in you, that have come out of you, that people engage all the time, will change the quality of life that you're going to have. I'm not going to leave without adding this. Is understanding that if photography is the science that studies light, and if what we are seeing is the way light is cast on a subject, and if you are light, then understand that every time you come in contact with another human being, you are shedding light on them. What kind of light are you? Are you a flattering light that brings out the best in people? Are you harsh and overwhelming? Are you boring and dark? What type of light are you? So if you look around your life and you're not very happy with the kind of responses you're getting from your friends, your business partners are not loyal to you, your teammates are always fighting you. It may be because you need to modify the kind of light that you're casting because light is light. We choose how we shine. And maybe we can see the kind of light that we are by the response of the people around us. So put up your right hand. Say, from this day forward, I make a promise to myself to not only look, but to see. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, T.Y. Bello. A resounding applause for her as she comes off the stage. I wanted to make it Q and A, but I heard there's a Q and A, so I just won't. I'll right. just stay with that. Yes. Thank you. Let's have our seats. Thank you. Thank you very much, T. Y. Bello, for that. I, I don't know what word to use to describe that now. Can someone lend me a word to describe it? You can see now. Eye-opening. Because I kept hearing the word, what do you see? I kept hearing it very often. And the question that kept coming to my mind, and I'm sure it came to your mind, is you have eyes, but what are you seeing? And it builds up from where Shay started. Chico took us on a journey. And where T.Y. Bello brought us to. I'm sure we have questions, correct? And I want to believe that you've written those questions. If you've not written your questions yet, you can take some moments to please jot them down. Because sometimes the faintest pen is better than what? The sharpest brain. Right. So take some moments to put those down because we're going to be moving into a panel session of all our speakers who will be addressing your questions one after the other. Before I call them up stage, I want you to with a very warm, resounding applause, appreciate every single one of them again. From Shane Banibe, who took us and started this journey on a high, to Chico, who made us understand that delay is 
And then we landed with T.Y. who asked the big question, which is, what do you see? A resounding applause once again, please. All right. So I'm going to start by calling every single one of them up the stage. I'm going to start from Shay. Please, can we give a warm applause as she comes up the stage? Thank you. Next, I want to call on Chico. Let the applause keep coming. And finally, T.Y. Bello. Can we keep the applause coming? So those of you who have the big question, how do I see? You have the opportunity now to ask that question. Please, let's keep the applause coming until she gets here. So there's a mic that's going to go around the room. I'm just going to step aside. I'm not part of the panelists, by the way. Should I join you? Well, I don't even have the quality to join you. <laughs> because I'm, I still want to see. And at this stage, delays. It is <laughs> no, not... I shouldn't rush to this one yet. All right. So and the mic is going to go around the room. We're going to take a few questions. I mean, we don't have all of the time, so we're going to take a few questions, and we're going to move on from there. Please, if you have questions that you want to ask in person, please just signify by raising your hands. Um, okay, we have one. Please raise it clearly so that I can just count. We have one, two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'll stop at those ten for now, um, and then we'll take it forward from there. So let me begin here. Please make your questions straight to the point, and let's you can direct it to any one of them so that they can speak to your thoughts. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. A special greetings to our facilitators. God bless you real good. My name is Davidson David. I'm an actor, and I'm also uh, a financial advisor. And I want to ask two questions directed to Mr. Chico and... Uh, I'm able to T.Y. Bello. <laughs> God bless you, ma'am. Okay, so to so Mr. Chico, if you were to change one thing in the industry, the entertainment industry where you function so much, what would it be? And to uh, Mrs. T.Y., this is quite very much um, dear to me, so please, I would love you to say this with so much passion on however you go about it. At what point did you realize this about yourself? Because you spoke with so much passion. It's beyond just your profession. It's beyond uh, what you understand in terms of your skill. At what point did you realize that about yourself? What's the encounter that changed the whole narrative for you? Probably if you can share that, it would be a whole lot of help for me. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to let you I go first. <laughs> Go on. Okay, didn't expect that. Okay, okay. At what point did I realize that? Um, at th that what? Can you give me those words again? What encounter changed the, the whole narrative for you? At what, what point did you? What encounter changed the whole narrative for me? So here's the thing: you don't have encounters unless you're searching for them. I'm a seeker. 
I'm a seeker. That's one thing I, I, I know. I'm a learner. I'm a seeker. I cannot tell you at what point, um, and I realize that very few people are blessed with aha moments. I don't really remember any. I think my aha moment is a culmination of so many small, tiny, 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 do you understand? Feedbacks that I, that I get when I'm seeking. And if I were to be sincere, I think it's in times of consistent prayer and meditation where you're asking, who am I? Why am I here? And, I'm ask, and I've been asking since I was 13. You know, when I was 13 years old, everybody around me knew what they wanted to do. People that wanted to be doctors, they knew. The lawyers, they knew. The actors, they knew. I had no clue. And for many of you in the room who are confused and, and, they think, and you think that your biggest weakness is your lack of clarity, you have to look at it very differently. The fact that you are not clear gives you the opportunity to seek and to search and to ask. And you find out that when you seek and you search and you ask, unlike those who have jumped into conclusions, you find out that you're able to find yourself. I think that's what my journey has been. The, the whole thing of not knowing and having to ask God. Thank you. Uh, all right. If I remember correctly, you asked what, um, what I would change about the industry. <clears throat> Right, well, being a radio presenter, I've, um, I've been privileged to meet some of the top names in the game as far as VIP celebrities are concerned, whether it's domestic or international. And, and I've realized that it, the ones I've met, particularly the international ones, I mean, the names... Uh, what's his name now? The um, Dion Warwick, Maya, Brandy, Next, uh, Donnell Jones. Um, uh, what's the Black Street guy? Teddy Riley, Bobby Brown, Michael. All the, the, the list goes on and on, you know. And then coming home here, one of the things I've realized is that we have that thing. I don't know whether it's a legacy of of colonialism, I don't know, but I try my very best to never, ever let this happen. And it's where I've noticed a lot of the times that with, with celebrity and money, particularly here, comes a certain haughtiness. But you see, you can still be an A-lister and still do that with humility and be that person with humility. Um, but some, uh, I see that that's something that happens over here. Because a lot of those guys, if they didn't say to you, this is Teddy Riley with all that achievement and all that behind you, he'll just sit down there like the next guy, have a conversation with you like the next guy. But his body of work and his achievement speaks for him. So, I, and I think those things are deliberate. Perhaps it's coached. I don't know. You know but it's something I'd love to change over here because if we had more of our A-listers who operated humanely made themselves, you know, not necessarily made themselves accessible because a lot of them might get mobbed, you know, but when you are in a controlled environment, I mean, come on, let's have a chat, let's have a whatever because you've got stuff to share. You got there for a reason and you do have a responsibility somewhat to give back. If you make yourself unreachable, I'm, I'm trying to avoid Nigerian names, but I'm therefore, no, you stay over there kind of thing. You know, I'd love to change that. Thank you. So um, my question is to Shay. I want to ask, how do you stay inspired and balance both work, life, and marriage? How do you still stay inspired and still chase this business with two beautiful kids and lawyer and everything? How do you stay inspired? And the second question is to Tiwa Bello. What skills has been most beneficial to you? What skills do you think that you can add to us that we can add to our brand to make us stand out, you know? 
and the last one is to Chico. Like, um, how did you pursue your career coming to this industry and knowing that there was somebody else doing this um, a radio, and you still be able to make your brand known? I would like, is there a sauce, a spice, something you could just, you know, tell us? Thank you. Thank you. Very good questions. Can I go? I guess I can go first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm always pumped and inspired every day. You no. Know, you know, I have days where I wake up and I'm like, can't this be a weekend? Or can, can, it, can it just be a weekend? You know, but um, most days, I think I learned very early on that the magic is inconsistency. It's inconsistency. If I can just show up. If I, could, if I can just show up, and trust me, there are days with business where you're telling yourself, I think at this point, we just, we, you know, I think I should just call it quit. But you, I, I do, was it church I heard this? Yeah. Was it church I heard this or somewhere? It said, usually, the big things happen when you feel like it's about to end. I don't know, I believe in that thing so much. Like, when it gets really bad, I'm like, something's about to happen. I th- I'm, I'm an optimist, and I have no... I have no, I'm not shy about that. A lot of people will look at situations and say, hmm, well, I would say I choose to be an optimist because there's a lot of things around us that could make me think otherwise. But when things are happening, I choose to believe that there's always a solution to everything. Yeah, there's a solution to everything. If you will just stay on, work hard, you will reach your goal. So there's some basic mantras I live my life by, and, and I would say maybe that, that, that's what keeps me going. I don't think anything is impossible. I believe all things are possible. I believe that if I work hard enough, pray hard enough, I tell my kids, look, success is half and half. You work like there's no prayer, and you pray like there's no work. You know, so once I combine that, I am going to hit and exceed my goals. And as long as I have God on my side, I'm, I keep going. There's no stopping me. <laughs> T.Y. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to ask you. I asked you before, what's the name of the sheep? Mwebelako. <laughs> Mwebelako. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the virtues is that I am so wembenako ish In other words, I'm an eternal student. I learn especially from those that are younger than I am. And I learn a lot from older people. So I hardly have friends that are my my age mates. So when you come into my space, I have friends that are way into their 70s and into their 80s. In fact, one of my friends' mom, when she was alive, was in her 90s. And she would drive with her sister and bake a cake and drop it for me. And we would have these conversations. And a lot of my friends now are... 20 years younger than I am. I'm not just mentees. They are my friends. You know, that whole thing, oh, you're my mentee. It's it's like, it's a very arrogant perspective to take because then you don't learn as much as you can from the the relationship. Yes, you can impart knowledge and virtues and your experiences, but when in your own heart you realize that it's a level playing field, somebody right now is bringing something to the table that you can never have being where you are, there's somewhere where you can never be right now. So I think I'm, I'm such a student. I'm a student of everything. I'm a student of music. I'm a student of photography. I learn from people I can access, and I'm on, I mean, I'm on YouTube. Hey, there's nothing I know on YouTube. How to make this, how to do that. I'm constantly researching. I'm constantly learning how I can do what I do better. I'm never ashamed to ask a colleague. I don't think it means I'm failing. I take photography classes from other photographers. If there's something that I feel that someone knows that I don't know well, I'm never ashamed to say, oh, how are you doing that? Um, Do you teach a class on that? Can you teach me? Can I pay to learn that? Because I find out that the goal when I started my career was the big word for me has always been timeless. So a lot of musicians get really embarrassed when people bring up an old song that they sang, especially when they have new stuff. But for me, it is such a big achievement because when I write a song, I want it to live forever. I don't want it to get old. When I make an image, I want the people to love it forever. 
And one of the ways to stay timeless is to constantly learn and constantly stay fresh by drinking from other people's wells. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I, I think the question was uh, about coming into the industry, how um, an industry where people had been there already, um, and how did I then, yeah. Um, I think it's, it, it's, it goes back to what I said about us, us all having something. We, we've all got something. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'm going to confess that, that I say that there are two types of radio presenter. <clears throat> the, the Messi and the Ronaldo. Now, how many of us will agree that Messi is like a, he's a natural? I think if you woke Messi up at 3 a.m. in the morning and gave him a ball, he'd do all those things that he does. But a Ronaldo, a Ronaldo has decided and disciplined himself and said, you know what, I'm going to be the best in the world. And if he stopped practicing, I think that the skills would wane somewhat. So one is more natural than the other. Uh, I like to think that I'm a, a, I've always been a bit more of like a natural. Remember what I said about daddy wanting me to be a lawyer and, and I decided to study theater arts. It helped a lot because theater arts is teaching you how to put on a performance. And so from a young age as a university student, you would have to stand in front of an auditorium that's much larger than this room and it's packed, and then you're standing at the front of the, of the auditorium on that stage, and Professor uh, Ola Vincent or Professor Kaloka would say to you, right, you're speaking to that wall at the back of the auditorium. That auditorium is about twice the length of this room, and if you speak to that wall, it's, your voice is going to bounce on that wall and reverberate around the whole room. I said, now, those things stay with you. Now, you're coming into an industry where you're a radio presenter and you're sitting in a space speaking to lots of people at the same time. Those skills will come in handy, understanding that it's a performance, understanding that you need to enunciate. That's how he used to say it. Push that voice out. You know? and, and, and so that's kind of what it is. Then you've, you've come into a space. What, the difference between younger people, I started radio, I was 40 already when I came to radio, so it was a second career for me. And the thing about older guys that you younger people might want to learn from is if they decide to do a thing, they will most probably research it well before getting into it. They will listen to teachers and so on and so on. And that's what I did. So the rudiments and the basics about it, I got those. So the foundation was right. There's a lot of funny people in the radio space today and they're there with funny accents and doing all sorts of funny stuff on the radio, but they don't understand anything about the science and psychology of radio. If the foundation is right, you can do it forever. Think of people like Larry King and stuff. These people started in radio and they're you know, still in the space. It's a career that has longevity. I could probably do this for another 30 years. God, I don't know. <laughs> no, but um, that is probably what it is. Yeah. It's been an impactful section. Good day. And um, I'm very glad having sit under the roof and at the sound of your voice seeing you people in person. My name is Wisdom Onyeso. I'm an actor and a model. I have three questions for three of you, please. Um, the first one matters to me and the third one as well. In the world of photography, as a model, which I am, and lover of it, how do I stand out in freelancing, having been duped and underpaid severely by managers of my brand? This is for you, T.Y. Bello. Chico, as a TV presenter, I co-own a TV station with my friend, and I'm, I'm passionate about it as well. I've seen most radios and TVs don't have academics for mentorship and training. How do we go about it? And the last but not the least, Mrs. Shea, where does the lawyer get involved in entertainment business? Is it when we are signing deal? 
or before we sign the deal. Thank you. Okay, I'll go first. I wish I had a clearer answer for you. I think um, you can be duped. It's not only models that get duped. Bankers get duped. Doctors get duped. Photographers get duped. Housewives get duped. I mean, I mean, you're, everybody's getting duped everywhere, every chance, you know. So it's, I think it's like a mixture of, of observation, knowledge, instinct, you know, sharp eye, you know, perception, and the ability to see. So the truth is this. It's easier to say, you know what, I, everyone has always cheated me, so I'm just going to go at it on my own. And that might be a way forward for you, but then it might not be because you are a talent and that might mean that you don't have access to your market. And so it's about collaboration. You will collaborate with somebody else who pretty much has their hand in the pot, or in the pie. In the pie? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's, I think it's looking at what your options are and also you know, researching what other people's ex experiences have been. Do you know anyone who's been in the game for long enough and what is the testimony of other people that have worked with them over time? You can usually tell, you know, if someone has integrity, if they've been at it for a long time. And if they have been at it for a long time, you can research and get the testimony of other people that they've worked for, you know, and, and, and see if it's something you want to get into. All right. Did that help you? Okay. All right, thank you. So your question is when, at what point do you need a lawyer? Before or when you're about to sign? Okay, be getting duped. I'm just giving an example because it happened. I, was, I did a job, a modeling job of one million naira sometime with a multinational. So I was paid 100,000 at the end of six months. You get, after going from all the way from Lagos, traveling down to Calabar, paid my flight and everything, but I'm being paid 100,000 after six months. So I happened to find out from an insider that my money was supposed to be one million. When, because I know that with the involvement of a lawyer, I can get my full pay. So when does the lawyer comes in? Is it before I sign that agreement or when I'm already done with the job? Okay. I'm Some people are saying before I sign the job. Remember, I'm, did you I'm sign just any, a freelancer. Did you sign any documents? There was no signing of documents. Right. It was just like we okay. picked you up and all that. Okay, okay. So I think the foundation already is faulty because it sounds to me as though there was just a phone call. Hey, guy, come to Calabar. There is a shoot happening. And if you, so at that point, you know, it was when you were meant to ask, who is covering my transportation fees? What, what are the terms? Sometimes it's actually, it's not really a lawyer thing. It's about you asking the right questions. And then, you know, when they tell you these things, you can then just take a step forward and say, okay, can this be put in writing? Because I'm a lawyer and I won't... I, I don't want you paying a lawyer at every, for every conversation you're about to have. It's not, you know, that's not beneficial to your pocket either. So I'll give you this. When you have such conversations, also make sure those things are put in writing. Don't just say, ah, he said. Never let your case be, they said. You know? Sir, can you send everything we just discussed, please, can you send it or can I send it to you and then you confirm that yes. Let it be in writing. If they say they're not, because you might tell some lesson, you know, say, chill, it's not that deep. They've not even chosen you. Fine. At least, can there be an email exchange or, you know, WhatsApp exchange or something, you know? So once it's written, you have, but I, I sense from this that you were told to come around, possibly you were even sure you were going to get the gig and you got there, it happened. I did, I had a six month stint in modeling when I was waiting to get into law school. So I know well enough that those agencies that will get you to do those jobs, are the ones that are paid for those, those kind of things. And then you, the talent, the model, just gets a percentage. And knowing our culture, a lot of times they don't even tell you. Or sometimes when you're, when you're done, they're done taking your pictures, they tell you, at this is the amount they are paying. No. So it's a very, it's a very, it's not regulated. That industry is very, very, you know, scattered. But I'll say next time, 
I don't see you having a case here. Sorry to break your heart. I don't see... I don't see you having a case here because nothing was in writing. It sounds to me like the modus operandi in that industry, from my, even my own knowledge. So I'd say next time, get commitment and get it in writing. Here, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, here. All right. Um, and I'll just take off from there because, you know, we do a lot of these sorts of things. I've done uh, many of these high profile jobs. And if you approach me for a job. If, uh, sometimes it just comes on my website and uh, the guys will send it to me and say, oh, it's this, da 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 But we've got a standing rule. You are going to pay 80% of the fee. And if we don't get the 80%, and there's a date, if it doesn't come, and that 80% has covered cost, it's covered everything, the 20% is just, but that 80%, if that's all we get and the job collapses, we're fine. You know, and I, I suppose getting to where one has got to, you've, you're fortunate you can do that and stand your ground. Um, but for a younger person, you might want to be a little bit more flexible. But may, don't just go into stuff if you haven't got anything in black and white. Um, to the question you, you asked me, um, I think it was about, about uh, trainings and uh, things in the industry, in the space, isn't it? And that there weren't any programs. That, that's not true. There's quite a few academies. I know there's one that FRSCN runs. I know that there's one that the, um, the, the Cool FM group run. I mentioned the City Media Academy. And I wasn't going to plug this, but you've given me the opportunity um, because we're getting ready now for the second edition of Chico's Radio Workshop. Uh, it's going to happen uh, probably be the third week in the last week in September or the first week of October. Uh, the first one was in April. And the idea is that with radio, it's, there's a lot of people in that space. I was mentioning to someone earlier, and, and a lot of them essentially are charlatans. Anyone who's thinking that these radio presenters, us people on the radio playing music. If that's what you thought, you couldn't be any further from the truth. There's a whole science and psychology and technique and stuff that goes into it. And you learn those things at such academies. If you look for them online, you will find it. So just look a little, be a seeker like TY, you'll find it. It's out there, okay? Number four. The last table. Thank you. Can we make it quickly so that we can get to the tenth person? Sure, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chi Nyere Nduo Korobo. You can call me Chi. I'm a behavioral health consultant. Primarily, I'm an addiction counselor. So, I, I know many people in this room are probably in their 20s. We realize, I realize the very defining decade for my life. You know, to do the things I want to do and be the person I dream to become. So that's the perspective from which I'm asking these questions. So the first question I want to ask, and I'm just going to make it open to everyone on the panelists. Thank you so much for all the wisdom you've given already. And so everyone can actually chime in here. My question is, we value mentors. We want to have mentors. But most times, you know, like Shai had rightly said, we are supposed to also add value to these people. Right? So the question in my mind, and I, I think I speak for many people here, is what kind of value can I probably add to someone like a Chico? Right? I cannot give them money. They probably have more than I do. What kind of value do, does an older person, and by older I mean more experienced, expect from a younger person that is probably a mentee to them? And the second question I would want to ask Mr. Wally, I think we're still honored to have you here. You know, you are a professional insurer, and I know we have a lot of people experiencing investment in this room. I want to ask, as a 20-something, what are the best investments to make right now? Money is very important to us, and we want a secure future. So when we are making financial decisions, what are the best things to invest money in at the moment? Thank you. Okay. All right. I think I'll, I'll go first. 
Great question. You know, you touch on a very sensitive topic because mentorship is something that is very, very personal to me. And in fact, as a result of that, you know, my talk show, we actually developed a mentorship academy that we run annually whereby we, we gather experienced corporates and entrepreneurs and connect them with mentees, people that apply for mentorship on our website. And I do that because I know what I went through when I was younger. I always found myself in this position where I think they keep saying, get a mentor, get a mentor. And I'm like, where should I find this mentor? <laughs> you know? Well, and then you now even find some people you respect. And then you either get a cold shoulder or they, you, they simply outrightly tell you or indirectly tell you, look, I don't have the time for this. So it's almost like they're saying you need a mentor to be successful, but it's no one to mentor me. So that's what drove me to even set up that. I mean, you could always follow our page at the BWG show. I hope that's okay. But, you know, we, we do from time to time provide free mentorship and we make sure we get people that want to do it. But honestly... I won't imagine that I, you signed up and I was, I was assigned to be your mentor, mentor and I'd expect anything from you. All, I would ex all I'd expect from you is if we fix a meeting, we're going to speak at this time, at this moment, be punctual, be attentive. When I give you assignment, before it's even time to you know, submit it, you are ready. Just that passion, alertness, hunger. You know, that's what I would want to see. Like you rightly said, there's not much you, you might, you know, you're able to do for me financially. I'm not saying there's no value you can add to me. And the beauty of mentorship is eventually we get to talk. For every time I've participated in our mentorship academy, eventually I learned so much as well from the mentee because, you know, we talk. And, you know, I pick their brains as well, but also I get to answer their questions. So there's a lot you can give, but that might come through the relationship and mental exchange. But honestly, it's your dedication, passion, and diligence to the mentorship. I hope I, hope I helped. <laughs> you want me to answer the same? Okay. <laughs> mentorship. It's about access that you've been given. And you have to, I remember the first, um, when I first discovered photography, it was by accident. I remember that I, I first started as a hairstylist. I used to run a salon in University of Lagos when I was in school. And I thought I was going to just be this great hairstylist, you know, for the rest of my life. Until I saw an image of a friend of mine. And I looked at her. I looked at the photo. The photo was finer than her. So I was like... I, who did this? And I was told, oh, it was this old photographer called Jackie Phillips. And I, I was like, I need to know where he is. So I went to Jackie Phillips' studio, and I remember I saw all these incredible photos of Babangida, all the presidents, governors, famous people. And they didn't let me see him. I remember then I used to come for me and Okpaja to VI by bus to this studio. I went the first time. They didn't let me see him. I went the second time. They didn't let me see him. I went the third time. They didn't let me see him. The fourth time, they just, the guy was like, Madam, what do you really want? And I said, for the first time, I said, I want to be a photographer. I didn't know that. It was just because he asked me a question. And he never really did get the chance. I never really did get the chance to be mentored by him. But what he did was spark something. He made me see out of my mouth, I want to be a photographer. And I think it's a situation of gratitude and understanding to know that I'm on a journey. And even though I don't have access to the wisdom and the knowledge and the experience that he had, maybe just that once chance meeting of him saying, what do you want, young lady? And I say, I want to be a photographer. And that one sentence has sparked the next 25 years of my life is something. So the thing about being mentored is... God decides who your mentors are. And sometimes you will not have access to people you think that you need. But you might have access to their materials. You might have access to their books. You might have access to every interview. I know one of my mentors is Tim Hetherington. I did have the opportunity of being mentored one-on-one -on -one by him when he was alive. But he died in 2011. 
And when I realized that there was so much more I needed to learn from him, I went on YouTube and I sourced every, in every single interview he's ever granted. I don't have access to him. But from online, I have, but online I have access to his wisdom, his perspectives, his experience. I think that this is the age where, this is the information age. There's nothing, there's no knowledge that you're looking for that you cannot find on the internet. And even if you want to learn from someone, you can learn just by observing. You can learn just by reading. And then you can ask God to give you the mentors that are truly yours. And he will shock you who he will send. It might not be that famous person. It might be your neighbor. It might be someone in the office. You know, our mentors are not necessarily mentors the way that we put it. It's those people that impact the way we think and the way we do life. And they are people that God has given us access to, not necessarily the person that you're trying to knock their doors down and they're not opening. Thank you. Uh, all right, Chinyere, you, you know, even without knowing it, when you consider everything that I said when I spoke earlier about the learning process being a continuous thing, that it never stops. Even as we're here and I'm taking questions, you are already adding value to us. We're having a conversation. Through these young people, I can get to vicariously see the world in a different way, see opportunity through your eyes simply because of the things that you say. And because I'm a radio presenter, and a radio presenter needs to be a sponge soaking up everything so that you've got content that is relevant and is important when you go on the radio. So that there already is value. Value isn't always just financial. A mentor will very quickly identify mentees who have potential to be great. They will very quickly identify the ones who don't operate on delay being dangerous. And very quickly, you're going to get put somewhere. Okay? So there's always value, and someone who has opened themselves up to be a mentor will probably be looking for that value and will be encouraged more with people who they see potential in than those who they don't. So for a mentee, whether a current one or a potential one, remember that you're not going to get a second chance to make a first impression. So put your best foot forward first. We all have value and we all have something to offer. Mm -hmm. Let's try and identify it in yourself and that should be what you project when you're stepping to that mentor. Yeah? Okay. Um, throwing the investment question at me. You know, my journey is... How do I put it? Insurance, investment, real estate, all across. But for your age band and for the age band of the people that are in this room, I would want to start with savings. You know, I mean, that's primarily where I'll advise that you start. And there are so many saving instruments. You know, I'm not going to go into details now, uh, but just setting aside sums of money with targeted goals over a period is the way to start. So shaping your mindset that by the time I'm 30, I want to have X, Y, Z. By the time I'm 35, I want to have X, Y, Z. By the time I'm 40, I want to have X, Y, Z. What do I need to set aside to have that? Also, I notice that younger people in this generation, because my, you know, I, have, I have kids that are in this band, you know, they set up clubs you know, saving clubs, investment clubs, 
So I've had one or two of them tell me things like, oh, you know, we want to buy land in Shongute Do or some, you know, but there are about 10 of us, girls, and they're putting money together in bits and pieces to own a portion, and they want to ride on the fact that that land will appreciate over a five-year period, and then they can sell and share the money. So I see things are changing over time. So this age band, we're not going to be talking about the multi-million Naira investment. No, 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 no. The odd 10, 15, 20,000 that you have, setting it aside, putting it against goals would really help you, right? Then you also have the stock market. Getting involved in the stock market um, is an invaluable asset. I learned about the stock market on my own. Right? And that is just by asking questions about if I buy this stock, you know, is this good? Is that good? What sector is moving? And so on. And with the odd 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira, you can always invest in the stock market. Um, and they pay you dividends, and cap it also appreciates in terms of capital. Then finally, I must speak to insurance. I used to sell insurance. I have one or two salesmen on this table. And the way I used to sell insurance when I was in my 20s, especially life insurance, would I walk to a client and I'll say to the client that you can write a will as a multi-millionaire. You may say you are not a millionaire today, but in death, you're a millionaire. Right? And that is by taking up life insurance policies and savings policies. You know, I know young people don't like to talk about death. So obviously, that's morbid. But there's a savings aspect of it, which you can also put together, and which can also help you in future education that you may want to have for yourself, or for a, develop, for a family that's growing. You know, because when you have a young family, your kids are coming up, you're in your 20s, and you're thinking of paying school fees in years to come. The way to go about it is insurance. If anything happens to you, and you're saying, how are my kids going to go to school if I, anything happens to me in my 30s? If you've taken a 50 million group, I'm sorry, uh, life insurance policy, if anything happens to you, you've created a 50 million naira estate that can. So these are just tips for this age band. You know, investment is wide, is varied, but start with the small ones, okay? All right. Um, I want to crave the indulgence of the um, speakers um, to take two questions at once for the sake of time so that we can hasten this up and move a little bit more quickly. Can I do that? All right. Um, so there's a fifth person here on this table, the second table here. Where are you? You're the one, right? Sixth. Okay, that's the fifth person, yes. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, my first question is um, to T.Y. Bellu. Um, for some of us that do not know, um, T.Y. Bellu has the best gospel album that I've heard this year. <laughs> so when you go home, make sure you stream. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my question is this. Now, being a creative, I've <clears throat> it's something that is particular to us. We always try to involve ourselves in a lot of creative work. For example, I work as a motion designer, but I am an actor. I am a photographer. I play the guitar, and I love music, right? So my question is, for example, you on your album, for example, you touched on different genres, and you, in the album she was rapping, and she was singing, a lot of things. So how do you balance excellence in different angles, being an excellent photographer and being an excellent musician, I mean an excellent speaker? That's my first question. And my second one is uh, to Shay. Um, my friend is in the fashion industry, and I'm sure that she would love me to ask this. How do you scale from being a, you know, in quote, small-time WhatsApp entrepreneur to being the Shay of the next generation? Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's quickly take number six person also so that they can then attack those questions at once. Quickly. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Oluwa Funke. I'm a legal practitioner. So I would like to ask this question mainly because I know that our panelists today, they actually wear more than one hat. So um, Chiku mentioned when he was talking about the fact that you should um, find something that interests you. And of course, it would be very awesome if what interests you makes money, makes you money. And also, you, you are in some way conveniently you're able to give back to the society with what interests you, you make money. What if what interests you does not necessarily sustain you? Like, it does not bring you money. So how do you get to balance that? How do you work around that? So, over to you, says. I think we'll, the first question was to TY okay. by the first person, and then we'll come back. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Love you too. <laughs> so you're talking about diversity, and, and my, my life has been so like, I sh if it was, you know, when they say jack of all trades but master of none, if that was really true, I should be a complete failure, because I am so spontaneous, and a lot of times I just go on a whim, and I feel something rise up inside of me, and I just follow it. And sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's nothing. And but I'm, I think, I'm so sorry, but that's the only thing I can use. You know, when Jesus says you cannot enter the kingdom unless you become like a little child, the truth is that you can't live life and enjoy life to the fullest if you lose your childlike curiosity, the ability to take risks, the ability to try. The ability to look on the inside of you and see all that you have and realize that everything that has been put on the inside of you deserves a day in the sun. I mean, even if it's just one day, you know, like we're here to live, you know. We're not just here to make money, you know. If, and, and this perspective is actually where commerce comes from, knowing that you are a human being of many different things, your eye doesn't look like your mouth, doesn't look like your ears, doesn't look like your feet. Every single part that makes you has its function. And I don't want to be a big eye walking up and down and say it's just about my eye. No, it's I have a kidney, I have liver, I have hair, I have a mouth, you know. And so I believe that every human being is more than one thing. And it's just having this perspective that living, truly living is you know, living out and exploring all the different gifts that you've been given and, and not being afraid to fail. You know, I think the biggest problem is that fear of, oh, if I do it and it doesn't work, you know, then, so you did it, you know, you did it. I, I think that's what's, what's important, you know, having the courage to express the things that are authentic to you and the things that you know are on the inside of you and the ideas that are gnawing, you know, knowing your, your mind and, you know, that is what living is about. It's not just about, oh, I have this plan, five-year plan, no, 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 no. Those things are important. But what a boring life if your entire existence is about taking goals that you set and you never have a spontaneous moment where you just say go ahead into something that you didn't plan. That's my perspective. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So how does your friend scale her fashion business from, you know, the smaller size to then something big? I'd say showing up every day, irrespective of what the numbers are looking like. She has to show up and keep building one block above the other and making sure, to, you know, if we made 10 Naira today, next year, what can we do to make 20? And then next year, what can we do to make 50? Just consistently seeking growth. I would also say, you know, a major turning point for me while building my jewelry brand, Blanc to Glam, was I was, and to be honest, one of the things that really helped me was making sure I had other sources of income. Because if I had had to grow especially in this kind of country, a jewelry brand from scratch, and, and I, that it had to feed me in the early days. It wouldn't even be in existence anymore. So I, I, like I just said, you can't have just one thing, especially in Ninja. <laughs> you, you must know how to, you know, while you're building this, okay, so what at least will be buying me food every day? What will be doing this? What will be doing that? So 
But I remember one day I was still in full time employment then, and a friend of mine says, Actually, I want to buy a stake in this your jewelry brand. I see big things, and then trust me, we were not making much. But I said, I, I, This thing, eh, just save up like two, three million, eh, and make noise. Boom. If you can just do that once every two, three years, you know. Even if it's one million, just make some media noise and then go back to your day to day. And I actually went back and I thought about what he said. I said and I challenged myself. I said, you know what? I'm going to save up some money for media and make some noise. And, and that has been our co culture consistently for the past, say, eight, nine years. I mean, we're not in the media every day, but at least once every year, we you know, put funds aside, we put together a media campaign. A solid one, good images, good videos, good everything, engage, you know, influencers, celebrities, reputable, ones, and we make noise. So, that, you know, because we, we must keep that top of mind awareness, and also we work aggressively at making sure that what we say, who we say we are, we are, and the service we have committed to provide, we provide. So people keep coming back. So I think that's it. Can I just add one thing to what yes, I said? Yes, please. So I, I, I just felt that I, I didn't want to mislead anyone. There's a method to my madness. Like, it's not just me just spinning around in circles and doing everything that comes to my mind. There are other words that are involved, like hard work, consistency, understanding what, where the opportunities are, jumping on those opportunities when necessary, making choices, seeking mentors, having God. I mean, there are certain things that are like the staples of life that make having a multidimensional life work. Otherwise, you would be exhausted and burnt out half the time, knowing when to rest, knowing you know, that there are seasons. There are seasons for music, and in those seasons for music, photography kind of takes a back seat. There are seasons where I'm a visual creator, and music takes a back seat. There are seasons when I'm doing everything because I'm like, you know, full on, complete vibes, I can handle it and I can take it on. It's just understanding how your own rhythm is as a human being and then those principles, hard work, courage, understanding opportunities, wisdom, the right collaboration and alliances, all those little things come together to make these things work. All right. Thank you very much. And there's one, there was one more question by... Oh, please remind yeah. me of him again. Yes, I, I remember the question. Right. And, and um, <clears throat> to answer it, um, to answer it, I'm going I'm to tell a very, this one is a really short story, but it answers the question. And I landed it after the story. One day, the snake was out with her children. The children were young, and they were hunting. They were going through the jungle. You know, and as they were moving around, they came across this hole in the ground. So the baby snake stopped. And the snake says, why are you stopping? And he said, ha -ha, mommy, can't you see that hole there? And the snake's like, look, you see that hole? You guys go forward and go inside that hole. And the baby snakes were like, ha, would you go inside that dark hole? We don't know what made the hole. We don't know what could be in there. And the snake said, I'm your mother. And I'm saying to you, go and go inside that hole. So they were a little bit scared, but I mean, mommy had said, go ahead. So they went, and they went into the hole. As they entered the hole, all of a sudden, from another exit, this huge grass cutter just burst out of the other exit and took off and ran away. Then the snake came into the hole smiling and says to her children, you see, know who you are. When it comes to things that one should be afraid of in dark holes, is us. The snake that is feared. You get it? So the moral of the story being, your question was, you know, about what you're passionate about. And it, it all stems from knowing who you are. So that's where you really have to start. And when I spoke about um, um, you guys having the unique advantage of time, as young people, what also comes with that? As young people, I'm sure if we took a look, I know that there are some young people who are orphans, like me, where both mommy and daddy have died. But I can assure you that at 57, I honestly have encountered things, I mean one now, where I wish I had, I could just go and have a talk with my parents, my mom or my dad, because they gave birth to me. They know who I am. 
They know how I was when I was really young. They know things about me that I probably don't know about myself. So it, there's a chat I can have that would set me right, help me with certain decisions, even as an adult. So perhaps speak with your, your parents, you know, and it hasn't been that long ago. Your youth is closer to you than mine is. You can think, you haven't got that far back to think. And then when you find out who you are, it, from there comes what you can do. So you spoke about following what, what you're passionate about and so on and so on. You see, it makes it easier. There are too many people all over the world, but I'm speaking to Nigeria, who are doing jobs today because they have to, not because they want to. And they're in that place deeply unhappy and just do the barest minimum. And today merges into tomorrow. Tomorrow merges into the day after. And they're unhappy. With unhappiness on a deep place eventually comes sickness because you're not happy. So that's why I say try to find it. Try to align what you do for a living with passion. You'll hear a lot of that here. I hear it when she is speaking. I hear it when T.Y. is speaking. These people are passionate about what they do. And that passion has taken them to the top of the food chain. So it's a good place to align yourself. Okay? Can I? All right, very quickly. Can I? We'll hello. Sorry, can okay. I just add something to what he said? The question was how to balance... So where's the lady? Uh, does not, yes, fetch you money. And a lot of us, so I, I, I need to add to what Chico said. Like he said, it's a blessing and it's a must. You must have what you're doing. You, know, um, you must be doing something that you're passionate about. But it might not fetch you money, but if you stay long enough at it, it would. I would like to add and say, while you're staying long and waiting for it to yield money, please find something that will feed you every day. And it, it doesn't ha you don't have to even be passionate about it. It might just be opening a provision store in front of your house and selling indo you know, Indomie. Like, just make sure you're not begging for money. You can feed yourself and your immediate family. Please, it's critical. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to our amazing speakers. It's really a privilege to be here. My name is Pepul Oprite, and I'm a corporate and immigration lawyer. So my question is quite personal. Um, how do you handle that phase of your life where um, you are, you, you, you're, you're not good enough, actually? It's not that you feel like you're not good enough. Um, where this is where you are, this is where you want to be, but you realize that there's a process to where you have to be. And then you're constantly having that backlash of, oh, you're not doing it right. You're, this, is, this is wrong. This is not how it's supposed to be. And then there's the shame. There's the backlash of all of that. So how do you handle that phase of life where um, it's obviously not just good enough? You know that eventually you will be good at it, but at this stage, you're, you're bad at it. That's my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to the next question, quickly, so that we can take the two at once. We have one more Is question. Is it okay to ask? Okay, okay, you want to take that? Okay, take two okay. good okay. afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so my question is, um, based on your perspective about life, your background, what you've experienced, how do you focus on what you see? Because um, if you find out that, oh, this is what I see, this is what I want to achieve, how do you prevent it from getting blurred by how probably what life has shown you? How do you like, focus on what you see, bringing together your perspective, your background, your principles, and everything? This is directed to T.Y. Bello, correct? To everybody. Wow, Okay. Um, we can take that very quickly so that we have one more question after this and then we will move very quickly to um, round up this session. If you still have questions, please do well to put them down and share them with me and we will attend to them um, and get it across to you. But meanwhile, for now, we're just going to take one more question after this 
and then we'll move on to the next thing on our agenda. Over to you, please. Okay, I can speak to the first one. The other one is about seeing, so I, I would just leave it for the... <laughs> yes, but I'm, I didn't get your name, please. Opi, Opite. All right, darling. So, the, your question, is it in relation to, you say you're a corporate and commercial lawyer? And is it in relation to your career? So, so I found it quite intriguing how you are, you are so sure you are not enough. You, was, you, you said, I, you know, I, I, I can think I'm not enough, but this one, I know I'm not enough. Okay, I, a little <laughs> background, it's basically from experience. So you know when you're thrown into um, a workspace and then you're given the actual job to mm. do, and then you do it and then you realize that, Oh, okay, there are mistakes here and there, and they're like, okay, this is bad, it's not good. So that's the perspective that I'm coming from that. Okay, this is not good enough. That's what I mean. Okay, I hear you. Okay, we well, are yeah, evidently <laughs> not getting it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it sounds pretty straightforward if, to, from where I sit, and I've been, I've been in that sort of situation before. I mean, the workplace will humble you. Corporate organizations, like, it will humble you because you get in and you see some people delivering, pow, 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 man. You're there wondering, am I, am I a stick? You know, like, did I go to school? <laughs> but, you know, you, I, I love a challenge, and you must see it as a challenge, a challenge for you to get, be better. That's how I've always approached such things. If I see somebody doing what I want to do so excellently, the next thing is to become a student, quick one. Most times, if it's in the same workspace, I mean, me, that person becomes my mentor, and I don't care if you're younger than me. Hi, please, would you have time? Can, you, can we fix a time? I just need you to please teach me this. Straight up, ask, and it shall be given. You know, and then ask and keep practicing. The more you do it and you learn. There's, however, a line, you know, in life. If you keep going at something, and you're, you have to know that point where you need to say, maybe this isn't for me. But it's usually relative. But most times, most things I know are learnable. I, I, I don't know if I've helped, but... Thank you very much. Over to Tim Avelo to help her to see. Question. So basically you were saying that how do you stop what you're seeing from getting blurry? You know, with everything that's been through. I would answer the question as a photographer. To stop it from being blurry, capture it. You know, and this is an interesting time to capture things. There's Mid Journey, there's Chat GPT. They're like tools that you can use to actually create images out of what's in your head. I think that when you see something, right, you, even if it means you are drawing a stick man or create a vision board, board or a statement that actually, you know, you see every day that says, this is what I see about myself. And and not only capture it in a way that you can say, see, but also capture it in a way that you can put it on your mouth. I have a lot of um, affirmations that I make every day. Do you understand? I actually have some affirmations online that I've done in the past. Do you understand? I think affirmations are very good words that you hear yourself say out of your mouth. The moment you've said those words out of your mouth, immediately you're able to believe it and your brain actually goes to work to figure out how you're going to make that happen i don't know something about seeing it and saying it you know so those two things together you must constantly put that thing before your eyes where you're constantly seeing it and a lot of times for most people they don't know this but the moment you can actually see it like that you can actually picture it happening nothing there's nothing stopping you a lot of times people you know, kind of like, you know, talk around it. They're not bold enough to actually say, actually see myself being blah, 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 blah. The audacity to even say it from your mouth and the audacity to actually find a way to visually represent it somehow, you know, in a photo, you know, you know what a vision board is where you take photos of what looks like what you're seeing and then you put it together and you're looking at it and then have sentences that you've crafted that you're speaking to yourself. I remember when I started my business and I didn't have any clients. I remember Feladrote would say, T.Y. Belo is the most desired photographer in Nigeria. 
And I'm like, nobody, des nobody desires me. Nobody knows my name. Nobody knows my work. What do you mean by that? I wasn't even T.Y. Below that. I wasn't married then, you know. But he used to, you know, put, make me put those words on my mouth, you know. And it was something that I would say over and over again. And you find out that the truth is that when you say it, it becomes your reality. So don't waste your words, you know. Just capture it in a way that you can see it. And then once you can see it and you're constantly looking at it, you understand? Constantly meditating on it, then put it on your mouth. Does that help? Thank you. Thank you very much. And now to the last question, the last question for this um, afternoon. Please ask your question so that we then wrap this session up. Thank you. Good afternoon to our wonderful panelists. My name is uh, Daniel Odile and I'm a real estate consultant. So my first question goes to uh, Madam Shea. And my first question is, um, you talked about um, exploring and evolving. And um, we understand that um, in this part of the world, it's quite difficult, especially for startups, to disrupt a particular industry, especially with um, putting in consideration some major factors in terms of financial, um, finances and um, connections and so on. So I want you to share some um, um, thoughtful insights with us, at least, on how to get to the top, if not even to the top, to a particular level whereby our trade can be recognized. My second question goes to uh, Mr. Chiku. As a captain in the media industry, um, could you define your personnel? What I mean is, um, when Mr. Chiku goes on the radio, are you the same Mr. Chiku? that gets out of the radio when the mic is off in real life. So how do you balance the Mr. Chico on the radio and the Mr. Chico in um, real life? So my third question, I think it cuts across to the panelists. You are celebrities and we are looking up to you. We admire what you do. But there's a major thing I understand celebrities don't like and it's criticism. How do you deal with real life criticism? Thank you so much. Oh, okay. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> I'm Shei Banigbe. Right. Um, nobody likes criticism. So I'd honestly say, I mean, I mean, at this stage, you just learn to, I mean, you look at it. Is there anything you can learn from it? If you can't, moving on. It's only, I believe I would only, it, they say it's when someone is close to you, that they throw out a punch and it hits you, right? Like, it's only, if I, if I punch Chico, it, it will hurt. But from where you're sitting, can you punch Chico and it hurt him? So if it's someone that isn't close to me, I don't know him, he doesn't, you know, you, you have to learn not to allow that person, you know, their words carry so much weight. Except you, there are some scenarios that it might matter. But most times, if it's some... Um, keep that happy person, you know. But when people closer to you that really know you and care about you talk, please listen. You know, criticism too helps. So, but to your question, it's, you know, you made a valid point. It's hard for startups, small, tiny companies to actually disrupt spaces. And, you know, when, when you said that, I, I just remembered my, myself. Because when I was going to start my jewelry brand, Blantiglam, every time... I would walk into, how many of us know accessories to die for? Oh, wow. Okay, but, but I'm sure, I'm sure you know. I said, yeah. So th then they were the only jewelry brand, you know, that, I mean, you would see her own a nice store and, you know, trendy urban accessory. And I would walk in there, look at everything, tell myself, huh, one day. I'll be able to display jewelry like this. And, you know, people will come in, great price points, pick anything they want and all of that. But I, start, I, made, I started from my boots. But the vision was clear where I was going to. I wanted to be in, in an upscale mall, selling to people, making them happy, making them feel good. But it started from the boots. From the boots, I got a tiny shop in Antony Village. If you know Newcastle, who knows Newcastle? Uh -huh. God bless you. 
<laughs> you know, Newcastle in Atoni. One tiny, I remember one day that when I opened that shop, I was so happy. I told my friend, one of my friends that was staying in VI, then come and see this shop by God. I was so proud. You know how if your friend approaches the gutter near your shop and you can see the person trying not to act disgusted. But I was so happy because that was the, I was not in the boot anymore. And I wasn't going to let anybody steal my joy, right? Anyway, but just saying that, that, don't be ashamed of your stages. You know, at that time, it was a big deal. I paid rent for a whole year, you know. I, had, I hired one person. People could walk in. I was happy. From there, I moved, struggled, struggled. I said, you know, what? Well, more people need this jewelry. At least people love it, but they don't have, it's hard to access. They'll tell you, say, you can't come to Anthony. I started looking for partners. Of course, I couldn't afford to pay rent anyway. I started talking to brands like Grey Velvet, um, you know, stores. Gosh, how can I forget? Names. I mean, many names, but Grey Velvet comes to mind easily. Spa. You might know Spa, spa Supermarket. We partnered with all these people. Okay, Sheyi, you can bring your stand. Okay, Sheyi, you can bring your staff to be standing here. Okay, you can bring your display box. For, you know, did that for several years. Then got that money. They rented a kiosk space at Ikeja City Mall. That one is, you say I said the money. Because <laughs> we pay rent in dollars there, you know. But God, that, God, that, God, because I mean, I knew that was the vision. That had always been the vision to be in a world class space and people can buy the jewelry, you know, and still maintain affordable price points. And it was a risk going into the mall because of the kind of rent one had to pay with the sacrifice. But it worked. And then we then started replicating. We went to Jabi Lake Mall, Abuja, Lennox Mall. And before the end of this year, we're going into three more malls. But are we disrupting it already? So you can do it if I did it. <laughs> Should I go criticism? So criticism. So I remember when I started um, as a photographer, I remember I told you I was a hairstylist. And I remember when I was working for Mr. Lakey Older. So he sat me down one day and said, I know, you're, I was like 21, 22 years old. I had it figured. I knew what I was doing. You know how when you don't know anything, but you think you know everything? And he was just so gracious. And he said, this plan that you have, I don't think it's going to work. Because how much of it are you going to do to actually make money? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have? How many people's hair can you do? Do you understand? Because you're not thinking of hairstyling as about opening a chain of salons. You're so obsessed with your own skill and your own ability as a hairstylist. You know? And then at that time, I shot everything from weddings. And he was like, no, T.Y., you need to. It's not working. You need to focus. And so sometimes when you hear someone who you know is very wise, scatter your plans or what you thought you knew was a good plan. Your ego can be bruised, or you can see it as a very big opportunity to re-strategize. An opportunity for you to what? Open your eyes and see. And so I think there began the conversation of focus. Yes, I know you're creative and you can do hair and you can do makeup and you can take photos. How do you bring this together into a thing? And I think that that decision of kind of bringing all this together is what I'm still doing today. I don't make hair anymore, but hair is such a big part of what I do. I don't do makeup anymore, but makeup is such a big part of what I do. Styling is a big part of what I do. Entertaining and honoring and feeding is a big part of what I do. But that one criticism that said, the way you are going about this thing is not going to work, is where the conversation within myself started. Who will we be without the criticism that we have received? Who will we be? The critics are your biggest allies. You have to realize that. Understanding when criticism is authentic, when it is higher wisdom. I mean, some people just criticize you because they don't like you. That one is different. It takes discernment. Some people are just hating. Now it's different. You, know, you have to learn to blank that out. But when somebody who, you know, it's just the ability to sniff out knowledge and it sniff out, this is authentic advice and take it and use it and make it yours. 
You know, it's one of the biggest gifts of our lives, I think. Thank you. All right, I, um, the question that you, uh, you put at me, the criticism thing has just knocked me sideways. Can you just remind me, please? Um, you asked something to do with, with um, my personality and who, with her separating it. All right, I'll start there, then land at the, the criticism thing. Radio is emotion. That's, that's essentially what it is. Can you, can you get on the radio and, have, uh, and, and connect with your listener? And the only way you're going to achieve that is to be authentic. If you go on the radio and you're not who you really are, radio will find you out because you can only pretend for so long. So the safest place to be, so as you're consistent and so as that you have longevity, is to be your authentic person. And, and there are tools that can help, that you can employ in radio, and these things help. But learn to share of yourself. So it helps. Yeah, you, being on the radio, you can come across like you're larger than life. You know, but all the challenges that everybody else faces. You're a human being, you face it too. So I had a flat tire this morning on my way to da 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 and I was stranded. And da, da, da and you come on the radio and you talk about it. It helps you to connect with your listener. It humanizes you with your listener. So it's, a, it's about being authentic. Uh, and I discovered that early on. Uh, so it's something uh, that I do. There isn't anything, anything fake or that's pretense. Uh, about it. I, I can be a bit opinionated. That comes out too. To speak to the what you asked about criticism, for a radio presenter, uh, this applies to comedians, for instance, stand-up comedians as well. Uh, you've got to use it because that criticism is going to come. But can you use it? You know, and, and learn to take the fun out of your own, you know, make fun of your own self. It helps, so use it as a tool. When I get messages, you, what I say to people when I'm training them in radio is, never believe the hype. You need to see some of the messages we get when you're on air via WhatsApp. Chico, you are a god. You're, I don't wake up every day. If I don't listen to class again, my day is not complete. Oh, yeah, yeah, they say all sorts of stuff. Now, if you, the day as a radio presenter, you start believing it, that's the day that you die. You stop growing. Because, I mean, if you're the king and you're, well, you're not going to grow anymore because you've arrived. And then, and then. So I, I never believe that hype, ever. Now, if that one isn't getting me, then the criticism, too, is not going to get me either. Uh, because the snake that strikes a tortoise shell, has it struck the tortoise? No. It's, all it struck was a shell. So you're going to have to learn to, to do that, particularly when you're a public fella, um, figure. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. So find a place. At the same time, the criticism, too, sometimes it's true. So if that's not who you want to be or be perceived as, you've got the power to change it by simply changing. So you go around carrying some sort of attitude and they say that to you on the radio. Or you if I say to you that as of 2004, I used to pronounce the word L-I-N-G-E-R-I-E -E as lingery. So I'd pronounced it that way all my life and it was the wrong pronunciation. And then one day, God so kind, I wasn't on the radio then, somebody said to me, said it to me in a conversation. That's not how to pronounce that word. And I argued a little bit, but when I went back and did the, the um, went to search, and I found that I'd been saying lingerie when it was lingerie. And I'd been saying that for a good 30 plus years. It hurt, but I corrected myself from that day onwards. So, um, you know, criticism is part of the course. Please learn how to ride it and don't just, uh, don't, don't let it knock you sideways. 
Thank you very much. A bigger round of applause for them. We're just going to um, take a photograph of you. Before you please have your seat so you can please stand so that the photographers can take a group photo of you together. For all of those that want to take um, Instagram shots, this is your Instagram shots here right now. Much. Thank you very much. Can we please give a round of applause as we go to the seats? Thank you, Shay. Thank you, Chico. Thank you, T.Y. Below. The applause can be louder. I mean, for the value that they have given to us, I don't think that applause should be anything short of an earthquake. Thank you so much for the wisdom and for the value that you have shared with us today. This morning, going into the afternoon, has been very insightful, has been very educating and enlightening. Can you agree with me that you can now see? Can you agree? If you still cannot see, delay. If you still cannot see, delay. All right, so we're going to call this session today to a close very soon and i want to appreciate us again once again for staying till this moment for those of us who are online also for staying with us till this particular moment please give yourselves a big applause i appreciate every single one of us apart from the value that you have gotten from the speakers you have also um, taken time this day to speak share with one another and to bond and to create networks that will help us in future. Um, I believe that this will be the starting point to a lot of good news that we're going to be getting from this room in the coming days. Is that correct? Is that correct? All right, to take the vote of thanks and to bring this session towards a close today, please join me to welcome the CEO of Custodian Social Responsibility Foundation, Mrs. Olubumi Aderemi. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to seize this opportunity to thank everyone, starting with the speakers, our mentors. I'm sure you all agree with me that they've done a beautiful job. We've got various insights from each one of them. From Sheyi, personally, I got um, the fact that you have to own your own logo. And as a business owner, you've taken us through how you started and um, what you went through to get to where you are now. And we wish you all the success, greater success in future. As for T.Y. Bello, we thank you very much for enabling us to see. You've told us the difference between looking and seeing. There's a difference. And that we should always choose to see the beauty in things around us, people around us, and things around us. Always take note of those things. Don't just assume. And um, as for Chico, Uwa <laughs> Belako. I heard that Uwa Belako story several times over the radio. And then I heard other stories too today. Um, all, I mean, we, we are very, very grateful to all of you. Regards to uh, Temisa. I know Charles is gone now. <laughs> so I'm only hoping that um, we intend to reach out to you maybe once in the next one year, whether physically or virtually. I hope all of you will be able to make yourselves available. Please. Because usually mentees, you know, look forward to such a session after this um, event. And then I want to thank all the mentees, all of you that turned up. We like the number. We thank you very much. Some of you might have come from out of town. 
thank you for making our time to come today. I'm sure you agree with me that it has been well worth it. And I want to thank, finally, the facilitators, uh, Taiwo and Tete, and the rest of the crew. <laughs> thank you very, very much. God bless you. And uh, the only thing I want to advise or say is that um, many of us, sometimes we struggle, uh, you know, thinking what we're going to do in life. But I think that um, the best way to look at it is that if you are a believer, God is your maker, your manufacturer. He knows what he puts inside each and every one of you. So you go back to him and ask him to lead you or to show you what to do. That is what you can be most successful with in life. Thank you very much and God bless you. A bigger round of applause. It's been such a great day. And if you ask me, I know one way or the other, we will want to keep asking questions. There are a lot of people who also wanted to ask questions in person. But please, if you still have questions, please do well to note them and bring them forward. I know you doubt if we'll be able to get the answers from the speakers to you. But yes, we will do and we'll get it across to you. Um, also, um, lunch is available. I don't think you need lunch after what you have eaten. You don't need lunch. Delay is dangerous. You need to step out and begin to use what you have eaten already. You need energy. Um, it reminds me of that story that um, Shei said earlier, where, the, where she said her husband brought plantain. So this is the energy you are talking about. But Chico agrees with me that delay is dangerous. Yeah. All right. Um, that was on a lighter note. But lunch is available. And we're just going to go one table at a time to each of the serving points. There's one serving point to the left, to my left at the back. And there's another serving point straight be in front of me. Right. So um, those of us on my right, you'll just, beginning from the table behind, one table at a time. Please, you just proceed there, and then you get your lunch, and then you can come back to your table. Once the table in front of you is done, then the next table can proceed for lunch. Just a minute, please. All right, one last thing before we proceed for lunch, and then we call today's um, session to a close. Every single one of us gathered in this room right now are going to be inducted or we're going to take the conversation fr from here forward. And that's be that means that we're going to have, we're going to open a WhatsApp group or we have opened a WhatsApp group for every single one of us here. Can we appreciate ourselves? <laughs> shortly, shortly a link a link and a QR code um, that you can scan or click on to join is going to be projected on the screen. What you need to do is pull out your phones, you know, all those, your smartphones, some of us. Right, that's the link. So just type in the link on your phones. It's going to pop up the WhatsApp um, group and then you join. The rest of the conversation of what is going to happen and what you're going to do in the group is going to be shared um, in the WhatsApp group. Having said that, it's been an eventful day. It's been an insightful morning and afternoon. But more importantly is that we can take away all of the learnings that we have gotten so far and go on to do great things with it. Once again, thank you very much for making it our time to be here today. My name is Femi. I've been your host for this eventful session. And good afternoon. We'll call today's session to a close. An applause for every single one of us and the time that we have spent here. Can we give ourselves a big applause? So lunch is served. The table is ready. Beginning from the tables behind, can we please march on to where the lunch um, servers are and take our lunch and then come back to our seats? Our speakers, our mentors will be here to continue the conversation with us even as we draw the session to a close. For those of us that are online, please, you can also um, 
look into the link on the screen, and then the conversations will be continued afterwards. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. personal belongings, your phones, tablets, and every other personal item you wouldn't want to get missing, please do well to keep them so that they don't go missing, please. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.